And we're on. You're on. Wahoo. Okay. You go ahead and send out the notifications. Yep. Let's see that. Okay, let me just make a post. Oh, we got one viewer. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. We're giving everybody a little bit of time to, uh, you know, get everything together, get their, get your water, get your snacks or whatever, whatever project, you know, you want to start, you know, we're warming up, getting ready, you know, no stress. No stress at all, folks. Let me see. Hey, Acro, come back. Oh, man. How was your day, Justin? Um, sorry, I have food in my mouth. No worries. <laughs> Yeah, now that little bit of food ASMR is out of the way. <laughs> it was actually pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, I was um learning a few more things, more three D modeling things in ZBrush that have really um helped smooth out workflow and so and I'm actually really excited. <laughs> so nice. That's cool, man. But yeah. Oh Duderson's yeah. back. Well that uh, you yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm just you know, tired and sleepy off of, you know, coming off of work early and then going through traffic. But, you know, it'd be like that sometimes. But I'm excited for this, though, to unwind. And welcome, Duderson. Good to see you again, too. Welcome, welcome, Duderson. Welcome, welcome. Oh, yeah, that traffic, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, the traffic. The traffic is intense. Absolutely horrible. But, yeah. So, just kind of recapping what we were talking about shortly before we started the stream. We're just going to pretty much, you know, focus on refining our things right here. And then we'll go from there, right? Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, cool. This is going to be exciting. I'm really excited about this. Me too, dude. My Ultimasaurus. My Edgelord Ultimasaurus. This is so The cool. ultimate angry boy. He's so angry. He's so... <laughs> the Giga Chad of hybrids. Oh my god. Hold on, let me quickly do a little... I'm going to draw... Just, just as a meme, I'm going to draw... Wait, what's, oh the, what's, what's the Giga Chad's face? Uh, he's just got a, a chin. He's got like a yeah. Just an ultimate he, he's, chin. He's just all chin. Let me just 
hold on, I'm going to try and combine the two. First thing. This little warm up sketch. <laughs> the Virgin in Dom versus the Chad Ultra Ultima. This is true. <laughs> he's like he's like he's like looking up. He's like looking off in the distance. He's doing something. Yeah, he's like I'm trying I'm trying to get the the, the expression right. Like, I mean the expression is he was like he's like smirking, isn't he? Yeah, hold he's on. Like smirking or something. Cause I'm trying, like, while I'm drawing this, that the music is playing in my head. <laughs> oh my gosh! Da, 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 Yep, exactly. Intense, intense funk music playing. <laughs> Sometimes I forget being an artist is a superpower and I can literally draw whatever I want. So if I want to draw the, the, the Giga Chat. <laughs> Dude, the manif the king's a manifestation. Have you seen, do, have, wait, Justin, have you exact, I, like, have you seen what I'm drawing though? Yeah, I, I'm looking, I'm watching it. But he's so he's so so edgy. <laughs> the trauma. Oh my god. This is like hold on let me. I'm gonna keep this and make this an emote for this chat. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a riot. This is, this is too good though. It actually <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm making myself laugh. I know this is super silly, but, Love it. but come on, look at <laughs> I don't folks, if you come in randomly and you're like, What is this? Yes, I, I am drawing a Giga Chad version of my of the Ultimasaurus right now, uh, for the lols. Um I don't know how we arrived here, but here we are. There's a quick little warm up sketch for you. The sad thing is, though, is like this actually doesn't look half bad. Do my new characters. This is cool. <laughs> Thank you. Ironically, an amazing sketching mode. I will take you up on that. We're just uh, Justin, with your permission, is okay if I we can make a, a sticker for this for the um, the chat. I would be upset if you didn't. Okay, so I actually will color this, like, for fun. <laughs> okay, cool. G Giga Chatosaurus. Ultimate, Ultimasaurus Chaticus. Okay. Now to get, now to get serious. I'm just kidding. That that was my magnum. Ryan. That was my magnum opus. I don't know how I can ever outlive that piece of work. <laughs> so on to another artboard, and this one's gonna be specifically focusing on this one. Chatocephalosaurus, yes, yes. 
chat a cephalosaurus. Oh my gosh. Hold on, just so people can have it. They're watching us. <laughs> what a riot. He stays. Anyway, uh, see, that's the ultimate hybrid right there, see? <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, getting serious now. Um, if you're going to be drawing with us, folks, don't worry. Take your time. Uh, Justin and I are about to start pretty soon, and we're going to get into pretty much... What was it again, Justin? Just kind of refining our sketches and kind of coming to ahead of where we want this to go near the end, right? Pretty much. Cool, cool, cool. So how long do you want to go to? You want to go to like uh, like 10 or 9.30? I'll go to 9.30. I'm okay. pretty sure we can get a lot done because we already have the basic sketch. We're just, you know, refining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. So yeah, we're going to focus pretty much heavily on rendering and I'm going to be rendering out this guy. We're not going to do color yet, uh, but I might do some basic tones of, you know, shadows. Um, we're going to save color until we get to the modeling phase, but I want to make sure that I get a good sketch in and, you know, Justin's going to be doing the same. And by the end of this, we're going to be compositing the best attributes and uh, just kind of letting you guys know. So I'll, I will be finishing this thing off screen for combining me and Justin's thing so we can have it ready by the time we hit the next session, which would be primarily modeling and color palette choice, right? Mm hmm Very much so. Cool. All right. With that being said, let me get my references out. Now, I, I really can't un hear that the Giga Chad music now. Oh, my gosh. I know. <laughs> okay. Um... That being said, I'm down. Are you ready to start good, sir? Yeah, I'm excited. All right, let's get to it. That's looking already. I love your sketch. Thank you, dude. I already let you already know I love yours. Yours yeah. is fantastic. Thank you. Did you get a chance to play with Photoshop? Because it seems like you're drawing a lot. Because you got a you got a really um, good handle on this all the way. I did not get a chance to play with it. I'm just trying to remember what I, how I usually sketch on Procreate. That should transfer over. You got it. Seems like you already got a good handle on it. The only thing I I miss though is Procreate has I try to download a uh, uh like a sketch pencil you know like a I do say yeah type. you got to get yourself you know, a good I, one but um yeah and like the the one that I downloaded it wasn't I can't do shape dynamics on it it doesn't allow me to go with pin pressure so it just comes out as one nasty texture and I wasn't a big fan of it mm, no worries. So I'm just gonna see where we end up here. I have some I have some ones to recommend to you if you want. Oh please, yes. If you could email them me or send them to me or I know in Discord we can send files. No worries. I will get my definitely, mods. I will definitely send you some. <laughs> the really interesting phase doing the line work and stuff and making sure everything's you know? exactly making sure everything's looking good I'm trying to pay attention to like that ceratopsian anatomy but there are things i don't want to lose uh, for example, like in the original like thumbnail sketch that I kind of like, you know? 
Yeah, you don't want to lose the. Uh... You don't also you don't want to lose sight of also the monster side of him, you know. Yeah. So like for example, I like how his beak was handled here. So I kind of want to make sure that. And comes... by the way, for all of you viewers out there, RJ and I are confirming that the Ultima Source isn't him. He is a Giga Chad. This is true. He's a, he's a Giga Chad. He... Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna keep humming that theme now. Please do. But I don't know how much I could sing before, like, you know, Twitch kills me. <laughs> oh, Clip Studio is. Oh, okay. So, Duderson had a comment. Clip Studio is pretty good when it comes to brush stroke sensitivity, from my experience. Is this good? Have you used Clip Studio before, Justin? I have never even heard of Clip Studio until now. So. Yeah, it's, it's another alternative program. It's really good, though. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to check it out. I, I like experimenting with different programs. Yeah, you might find you might find it's a better fit for you, and it's it's compatible both ways with Photoshop and I think Procreate as well. Oh, fantastic! Because I do like using Photoshop for um, like my uh, you know my uh, uh I, I do use it to edit like ZBrush. Yeah. Concept art and stuff like that, you know. Is this Clip Studio free or? Um, I think there are payment plans, but you get, I, I do pay for it. Uh, like I, not like as a monthly thing. I just paid for like a, a like a disc. And it updates a on disc. it. Why? Well, it was a long time ago. I own it though. Oh, okay. I was going to be like, uh, I, I was gonna be like, I don't think my computer, I don't think anything takes discs anymore. I know. Oh my God. So you can, you can, you could definitely buy it though. Like you can definitely get it. Oh, there's free versions and payment programs too. See? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that makes sense. want to get too bogged down I gotta, gotta keep it kind of moving that's the thing you don't want to get uh, too focused on one specific area you kind of want to float around you know yeah You should probably let everybody know that your first video is up. Oh yes, yes. Just in case you haven't heard, folks, um, I my first uh, episode one of the sh of um, the edited version of stream, uh, my first stream episode one is up on my YouTube channel. You can find that um, link in my Instagram, but also in uh, if you go to my Instagram, my link tree, you can find my YouTube channel as well. But you can also just find it at Arjuno Illustrated on YouTube as well. It's really cool. I had fun editing it up and trying to make it look, um, you know, kind of a vintage look to it. Kind of something I've always kind of loved playing with, especially with my own stuff. And so, yeah, it was, it was really fun to kind of learn how to, you know, kind of, I, I have done a little bit before, but nothing too crazy, but it was just really cool to kind of get a chance to really try it out and really test my skills and, and learn some new techniques. Did you have fun while doing it? Yeah. You know, first it was like a learning curve, though. I'm not going to lie. There's like a lot of things like uh, I'm, I'm doing this wrong. But, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of just kind of relaxed and kind of went with the process and it was fun. You know, I've, I've learned a lot of new things. It's very intuitive, you know, especially since I have the Premiere program, which is similar to, you know, again, the same kind of thing as 
Photoshop and Illustrator. So it was like similar tools. And I've used Audition before, you know, my old job at this school. So it was just like, it was very familiar territory in a lot of uh, regards, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it was just kind of, you know, putting it together in a new way. It seems fun, though. Yeah. It seems really cool, especially when you're learning something new that you know that you're, you're... And then, like, you just start unlocking doors for yourself, like, oh, I could do this in the future, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the, the beauty of it. It's really fun. Everyone, that's why we always say at least try. Every, uh, at least try. You know, um, because you may just surprise yourself, but it's something that you really, really enjoy doing. Exactly. You might find something new. Oh my god, he looks so evil. He seriously just looks like the devil from Legend. Like the, the movie Legend. Dude, I'm loving yours. I'm absolutely loving yours. Yeah, I'm going really... I want to take extra care with the detail. I'm going to go and channel a lot of the newer techniques. We'll do. Yeah, channeling a lot of the newer techniques I've learned. You know, since we have more time with this one, it's just kind of a dedicated one to a sketch. I don't have to kind of speed run it, you know? Yeah, we're just, that's why we're kind of here. We're just kind of relaxed and having fun with it. If we would close, it actually be more like, there we go. I'm also trying to keep, you know, correct some just anatomical things, you know, like this beak will be a little shorter if it wants to close, you know, like the lower one. Yeah. Hey, welcome back, Ruiz. Good to see you, buddy. We're just getting into doing some line art. Line. We're talking Giga Chads of dinosaur of hybrids. Yes, and to show the meme, hold on. See, like you know, <laughs> you know, G uh, Giga Chad Ultimosaurus. <laughs> okay, so this would be going here. <laughs> I know, I thought it was very funny too. I just can't unhear the music now. Just like, uh, da, da, da. you know. And keep thinking, humming that pretty much through the night. So I apologize, folks, in advance. Sure, there's continuity here. Here we go. There we go. In my chaos effect, 
show, my group and I are going to go so deep in the idea of engines, scientists mixing human and dino DNA. Oh, reminds me of the scrap plot for Jurassic Park 4. Remember that, Justin? Oh, memories. That's why I appreciate the Scorpius Rex so much, because it reminisced really of that original concept. Right? I know. I love that stuff by Carlos Hahn. That was really cool. Very unique. Very it's very very unique. You know, I mean, he's a really good artist. Like you know, I love his work. That sounds cool, buddy. Let me see. I think it's a really funny style that you and I have both kind of adopted. Is that? Where I feel like I don't, or what I've noticed from your art too, we're not a big fan of like the, of the crocodilian teeth where they jet out every other direction, kind of like the Indominus and yeah. the Raptor. We're kind of like those really organized looking, uh, you know, serrated teeth. Yeah, well, like you know, it makes more sense. Like for like, you, for like, think of it like this. Not saying it doesn't for like a crocodile, but like a crocodile's teeth are specifically adapted for their environment. You know. Yeah. You know, they're like in the water, ambush predators, and they don't really need like their lips because they're, you know, being moisturized by the water themselves and they yeah. have different oral tissues for sensitivity. But like when you're a land predator. Oh, the stream froze uh, for Ruiz. Um, yeah. As, is it good for everyone else? It's not, it's not frozen on my end. Okay. No. Yeah, but when I'm staying here, it's not frozen. Huh. Connection yeah. issues, maybe? So, might just be connection issues, Ruiz. Okay. And it seems like we're still going. No, yeah, we are. Because I, I have I have our, our stream going on for cool, a, cool. another monitor. Nice. To keep, keep in check. Let's make sure we don't die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, but there was a thing that uh, Acro said. Uh, now every Jurassic World therapy is crooked teeth. Yeah, it's not the greatest. I know they did that with the Giga, and they did that with like all these other. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I, I, I just, I just think of like the time when like creepy pasta pictures were coming out, and the, the scariest thing was like those, uh, just the perfect teeth. The perfect teeth were both scariest. You know, Chip to killer. Yes. Oh my gosh, Chef the Killer. What a riot. You know, Creepy Pasta was really a fantastic era. It was. When we were and young. <laughs> when we were young. Now I'm thinking about that song by uh, the Killers. I was thinking of uh, my father. Look at me. <laughs> they do this. To see the blood. I don't know. I'm just, I'm One day. Okay, now. we can't be. <laughs> we gotta be careful. Yeah. I know where. We're letting our age show. I know, but um, okay, no, no problem, Ruiz. Like I said, the you know, if you miss any parts right here, the, the streams being recorded. But yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think it's any secret that me and you are not the biggest fans of the Jurassic World franchise. Yeah, and that's okay. It's just yeah, that's because right. uh, we have art. We just have particular art styles and tastes, and Jurassic is, Jurassic Core is perceived differently to everybody. Oh, Duderson says, but yeah, I was going to say, I like how you guys' aesthetics differ so much from the current Jurassic World hyper croc cell. But still feels Jurassic. Thank you. Thank you. See, we feel, we feel Jurassic when we do this kind of, you know, these streams. That's, I guess that's always the hope, you know, to have that uh, Jurassic core feel, you know. Connect to our roots. Or Jurassic yeah. roots. You know, I, I try to try to have a theory of why special effects in like the new Jurassic World movies has become um, sort of become a very irregular and jagged. Yeah. You know, versus very uh, you know the previous movies where they were kind of very organic, and I think it's probably because I think I think it had to be during sort of the Game of Thrones. Oh, you mean like when the sort of the yeah when the dragon started trending and like. I think a lot of people had practiced sort of that instant uh, kind of that, that stencil, not that, you know, kind of like the, the stencil and stamp type texture when yeah. 3D modeling. So it became a lot easier. Um, 
that's why, like, even down to blue, the Velociraptor, why she, you know, she looks like a friggin' iguana. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, the original ones are those leathery type, you know, but those were all done by hand, and they were organically kind of figured out. Well, I think the kind of the dragons were more of a, uh, when the dragon trend came out, it was more like, you know, they're they're more supposed to be um, rough and dragon. So I think it was just kind of the products of people that were working at the time and how they were created, you know, was kind of a... Kind of like, you know, you, know, they were, you could see their training, you know? Yeah, yeah. Training, but then, like, style at the time, especially during that 2015 era. Yeah, yeah I do, I agree. Also, uh, Duderson says, and also how your own versions are really distinctive. RJ's is yours is so gen uh, angular, and Justin's yours is so round and organic. Definitely. Thank you. Oh, I like the little lips you had, like the little, like, like lip tissue right there around the, the bottom. Yes, the, okay. I love these in my monsters and my animals because I, I always think of the scariest thing to me, I feel like actually it's not the scariest. I like to I like to I like to film my dog eating fries in slow motion. Um and so there's something about like when his mouth opens up and you see like all like cause he like has like his has a pit bull mouth, so it's mm -hmm. a little bit wide. Um and so there's something about like when a mouth like a huge mouth is like moving and like all the lips and everything are just moving at the same time it's very organic and very kind of scary nice so i just kind of like those aspects of it. i do I like added that in um added that in the dilophosaurus to my dilophosaurus sculpture yeah well. a little bit of that kind of jowly like lip tissue yeah you know just extra flesh in there you know yeah more flesh bits yeah I love the grain on your on your on your okay so i i absolutely love the sleekness of your um the shape of the skull on yours and i love how it just bleeds into like into the beak and do this and it looks da it looks daring and like like a red flag you know what i mean like yeah. you know it's like it's not just meant for it's not just like meant for show like there's purpose behind it you know it's yeah. kind of scary it's, it's, kind, it's kind of giving me terror bird vibes which um yes you know, I, I hear, I see the newest meme from that newest Dino documentary. With uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I want to watch it just to see how it is. But it was a life on our planet. Um, but people are like up in arms, rightfully so, because they show that trope of the terror bird getting out competed by like Smilodon. You know. Uh huh. Uh huh. But like people forget that terror birds are like massively big animals, and I don't think it'd go down super easy <laughs> to like a, a saber tooth cat. They, 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 the beaks are powerful. I think yeah. people underestimate the power of a beak. Exactly. Know? It's like, like, but like how big they are too, and like their range of motion. I think that's another thing. Also, hold on. Um, two things. Acro said, "I really need to dive into Jurassic World art inspirations at some point. I've gotten pretty good handle on where JP Cell comes from, but not JW. Not so much Glenn uh, McIntosh drove it. Also, Rui says we're planning to add DX into season two of our show. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool." And as so, far Black Eyed Acro, mm -hmm. I, I was going to say, I think I do have an answer and, and, uh, um, that uh, trails back to what Arjun and I were discussing. Um, during around 2015, there was sort of a huge change. There was kind of a flop in like three, the way things were 3D modeled and to where you can kind of you, replicating texture and using texture, like basically like stamp stencils and like uh insert mesh tools where you it would where the detail would already be made and you could just basically kind of drag and drop like detail that was kind of a huge thing during uh, especially because computers back in like 2013 2014 everything was kind of changing especially with mac and pc and stuff like that so a lot of it which just had to do with what cap uh, computers were capable of and what was a lot a lot uh, was allowed to be a lot faster and easier because that time was very very rushed there's a lot of things that were just kind of coming out, coming out, coming out because, uh, especially because the millennial period, things were everybody was kind of shifting into this huge job phase, and and uh, the the mar the career market was kind of spiking at that point. So it was a lot about what could be done fastest or fastest. Um, so that sort of had a lot to do with it. So that the the detail could be was was very easily um, replicated. It was very easily um, kind of copy and paste, which is why. I, you might you might see that detail in a lot of movies that have come around around that time. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, you're good. You're good. I'm just trying to remember what films were coming out at that time of the Jurassic World. There were like creature films. There wasn't a lot. Were there? No, what? No, Godzilla 2014 was out like the year before, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you remember everybody? Every like everybody for remember the the end of the first that Godzilla movie, and then everybody was like, "What about the fight?" Like there was no really a big fight scene. And yeah. Everybody kind of got satiated with the Indominus versus the T Rex because he wanted a fight in Godzilla. You know. This is true. Not just scalation, but proportions and shapes as well. True, true. One thing that I, I will say, yeah. um, I was gonna say, uh, ooh, I, the one thing that I will always kind of be salty about in Jurassic World, that concept uh-huh. trailer to me was much more interesting. <laughs> Uh, oh, which concert trailer? Don't you remember the one they dropped at San Diego Comic Con behind closed doors, where they got like a huge Quetzalcoatlus like picking someone off, and like that's. Oh, okay. So I heard that was not. I heard that was for a game. What that was for a game? I I thought that was like they had the scenes, you know, like. Um, yeah, I they... heard that was for like I I read that someplace that that was actually for like a Jurassic game type thing. No, it wasn't I... really Jurassic World. I thought it was because like you know they they had like cool footage of like the the scene of the mosasaur in the ocean, which eventually came later on. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think those were just teasers for like a. Those were for like a game type deal. Mm, okay, well, that, that's either way, because I, because I know exactly what you're talking about, and I was actually trying to find that footage, like like a month ago. I was really curious about it too. This is a little not much. In... See, I, that's the thing. I didn't know it was for a game. I thought it was for like for the like on you know just like footage from the film. Yeah, Duderson. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah. It was for a. I know it was so. That's I remember that too. I remember it was trending, and I, that's what I thought it was too at the time, like back when it, you know. But uh, yeah, it wasn't it, sadly. No worries. You were bam. You were bamboozled. I was bamboozled. Um, yeah, I was behind the guy behind Trespasser. David Krenz did all the concept art for the protagonist. Was going to be able to coordinate uh, nice. with Raptor and Tyrannosaurus. Tra- that's cool. Okay. Okay. Makes a lot more sense. I love Trespasser so much. Yes, yeah. God, Trespasser was so rad. Especially with, like, the Hammond files. Oh, I love... Oh, you mean the audio? Yes. Like, where he does... So, do you listen to the same thing, like, on a... Someone on YouTube had, like, compiled them into, like, a whole thing and added, like jungle sound effects and like yeah he made it like an audiobook it's so satisfying i love it so though satisfying i love it so much i know exactly which one you're talking about and i love that one so much you know whenever you want to get like whenever you're trying to like jurassic park like 90s jurassic park concept art or just art in general uh i just if you listen to that it really just sets the vibe it really helps you out and there's one do you remember the one i sent you about like the high hide with ambience <laughs> yes that was cool. i love it because it's not really like it's not really like calming it's like it gets you like in the zone for writing action exactly just like you know especially the um the the drums you know especially with the bongos and the djembe drums going down like doom, 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 doom. yeah yes. Um, Reese, do you uh, have do I have permission to share ideas for my show? Sure, it's it's ultimately what you feel comfortable with, buddy. Like it's your ideas, you know. You can feel be as private or as public as you want, you know. It's ultimately your choice, you know. Never feel like you. It's ultimately what you want to do, you know. Yeah, I will say never feel silenced or anything like that. Exactly. I will say though, just you know, keep in mind, like, what do you want, you know. What do you, again, you know, what, what do you want to keep a secret? What do you want to keep public? And it's ultimately, you know, your choice to decide. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So that's one quill knobs. The Cerebus Slug Rex is the Cerberus. The Cerberus Slug Rex is the main villain. That's pretty cool. It reminds you of Dino Crisis Three, <laughs> which I will forever stand. Uh, well, I know terrible game. I'm not trying to argue it's not, but the creature design is cool. Oh my god. 
Like, I'm not going to sit here and act like it isn't. The, the game, you know, the first two are far superior games and, you know, atmosphere and everything, but, like, I have a special place in my heart for them. Cool. Talk to you about the Dino Defender games in Danger Zone. I know nobody people because they're just kind of, like, kids' computer games. But for me, man, I could... No, no, the, those are saying those, are... those games are legit. Those games are very special to me. We're trying to be as crazy as possible. Hey, go for it, you know? You're writing your own Jurassic Fantasy fanfic world? Go for it. You don't have to play by the rules. Yeah, I mean, Jurassic World didn't, so... Exactly. Sure. <laughs> no, hey, you know, this is true. Sorry, that was some Jurassic Shade, everybody. Jurassic Shade? That sounds like a brand of umbrellas they sell. They probably were. Yeah, they should have. I would have bought one. Yeah. Jurassic Shade it sounds like the um the tea room for like Jurassic Slander. It probably is. <laughs> like amongst like employees or something. Oh my god, mean, like, that 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 is that is some shade. lore. That's some Jurassic World lore because you know, you got to imagine like social media was like a thing in that time. Oh my gosh. Social media. You know. I wonder how they would have marketed that whole park. And that's it. That's see. That's and that's good world building. World building is so much fun. I feel, I feel like you could really bring a whole character, a whole movie to life if you just really put in some effort into the world building aspect. You exactly. Know? Uh, Rui says I voice like four main characters. That's a lot. <laughs> you got this though. Four main characters. I mean, hey, if you could do like, if you, if you can make voices, more power to you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is coming along nicely. Look at this, dude. I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. Sometimes I like to switch on and off between like you know under layer and like over layer to kind of just focus on the details alone. Yeah. Oh, Nick Hammond and Arby. Hey, cool little Arby shout out from, you know, Lost World. See, Arby doesn't get enough love. You know. Oh my God, Justin, yours is looking amazing. Thank you. I'm trying. You have you have that like William Stout quality to your your pencil work that I've always loved. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. No, like the, the way you line things. You got this very graphic thing, and I also love like the right. Okay, so so go like to the eye where you trail off something like this. So like you have a curve that you're implying, right? And you do this. Huh? Uh, uh yeah. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I oh, love oh, that. Oh, oh, like what? Like with the little uh, the little lines. Like yes. That. Oh, oh my God. You know, I love I love that line quality of your work so much. I don't I don't know where I came up with that, or I don't know where I started doing that from. Well, it reminds uh, me of William Stout. Is that from the original from the those the dinosaur comics? The yeah. really primitive the. Well, that's like from uh no the Jurassic Park cartoon art that you know. Not the. Cause even I'm curious. Some of these things I haven't, I don't even know. Like like I'm just here existing it's okay <laughs> see because the one thing I, I like about your eyes you remember that the operation genesis uh those little those the con kind of the, almost like the concept art sketches yeah yeah i that's what yours reminds me of and i really like oh thank you oh Rui says first episode is the ceratosaurus episode called thermogenesis that's pretty rad. Nice. Also, Duderson's love the texture work. It gives a Todd Marshall vibe a little, a little bit. I think that's exactly what I need to be for this, this for how edgy this gentleman is right here. Because this is the edgy of edgies. Yeah, and Justin, the you, giga you know of edgies. This is true. Wait, Duderson, are we talking about my work or Justin's? Either way, you know, yeah, you're, you're, Justin's is, you know, amazing. Let's get everyone in the chat. Everyone shower Justin with compliments. He deserves it. 
We want to shower RJ with compliments. Oh. Go on his go on his Instagram and comment on every one of his posts. Oh my god, no! Tell him be... he's amazing. Like every one of his photos, so you can get like. So we like if you. 10, oh, thank you. But like if you want, you don't have to. You're not compelled to do it. Yeah, but you have to. You all have to oh. appreciate RJ. <laughs> I see. See, I, I, it's it's okay. You know, I am just here vibing amongst my fellow art folk. <laughs> Maestros, oh, we're, we're maestros, man. Thank you, uh, thank you for your support, folks. It does mean a lot to, to you know, have you y'all here looking at us doing cool creatures. Makes makes it fun. Makes it very cool. Would you say so, Justin? Yeah. Well, we're having a really really fun time. It's, yeah. It's great to just be able to. Be in this environment with people that are, uh, you know, it can it can appreciate Jurassic for like just more than just a dinosaur film. You know, the art behind it, the hard work that goes into it, the science too. You know, it's it's a uh, it's really mind blowing. You know, especially when you were a kid, it was just it's crazy. Such a phenomenon. Phenomenon. Do, do, na, na, do, do. Na, na. Phenomenon. Okay. Now, because I want to be visually consistent, and I'm trying not to be lazy, uh, I'm going to do this. What are you going to do? Watch and see. So I have that guy's face there. Are you just going to flip it? No, no. So... I'm actually going to actually be a good boy and actually draw and said copy and paste, but I want to make sure that like it's visually consistent with each other. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to like actually reference my own drawing, <laughs> you know, trying, trying to be legitimate and whatnot because you know, this is, you know, the main, event drawing just do this just do that and plus I also want them to have a little bit of uniqueness between the two of them since though they are sharing the body they have different heads therefore maybe different minds you know yeah In episode, oh, Ryu says in episode three, we made a giant reference to the camouflage and Carnotauruses. Cool. Those are some cool gents. That's gonna be really cool to see. Hey Justin, what do you like about the what do you like about the camouflage uh, the chameleon carnotauruses? As you know, in some secret projects, I am more than a fan. Mm -hmm. This is true. It is also a chameleon type dinosaur. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun figure. I know it's gonna be cool. Folks, you have no idea about the cool secret stuff Justin be working on. 
Andrew gets all the details. This is true. Um, odd question, but do you guys know if there are any have been any multi-head animals, i.e., snakes, lizards that have lived full lifespans? I think there has, but I'm not entirely sure. Ah. Yeah, I thought snakes, right? There have been some snakes that have lived quite a long time. Yeah, I think some snakes have made it. Uh, I know there's like a turtle that did. But there's people that make it. Yeah. I think the big thing is just the um, I think the big thing with those uh, is the distribution of blood to the brain. That's why a lot of them don't necessarily survive a lot. You could always play that in a thing if you have problems. I know there's a fossil of like yeah. one that has bicephaly. Yeah. There's like a fossil a like fossil? really, really. Yeah, it's like a oh my god, I forget what it is. It looks like a little long-headed lizard. It was like this little little lad. A wee lad. Yeah, I forget. It was like a tiny one, but like it, it, it you know, it was preserved. You know, it happens. I think I think so. Well, maybe. I can't. I really couldn't say for sure. I don't remember the name, but take your. I think you may be aware of it. I wonder if there's ever like a two-headed sauropod. That'd be kind of rad. I, I, you know, it's like two. Okay. Let me. Yes, there we go. There we go. Yes. Okay, gotta keep going around. Oh, Reese is asking a question. Anyways, would you guys like to cameo for like a second in, in the show? It's all right if you don't. We just need people to be play dino fodder. Uh, I mean, we would love to, but in, in general, like, you don't even know how busy RJ and I are behind the scenes. This is true. It's even, like, we... It's uh, like barely make it in time for these streams. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> It's a um, flattering gesture, but yeah, we be pretty busy. I got finals going on right now, and I got a lot of you know yeah, professional projects. Got, uh, Ten thousand projects. Not only that, we also got professional yeah. things to do. <laughs> Some... It's amazing how it's amazing what happens when you get older. All the things. I you know. Do. God, I had all the time when I was like in. I never told you life was gonna be this way. Oh, oh, oh my God! Don't you dare, Justin. I work at that place where that song was played every day. <laughs> but but it's such a good show. Oh my god. Don't do this to me, man. <laughs> hey, I worked at Six Flags and Universal. So you... I have to deal with every single thing. <laughs> this is true. Okay, hold on. I am tripping out so hard. Like, place... like hey, I placed the ear on that guy pretty good. So what am... what's my problem? problem is that no one ever told you life was going to be this way. <sighs> okay. Oh, oh Acro was asking, what'd you do at Six Flags in uni? Oh, I mean, I, I, nothing professional. I was just, like, at Universal, I was a ride operator. And then uh, at Six Flags, I was the game attendant, which is very, very interesting because, like, um, I'm very like sort of antisocial and introverted and I'm not a big fan of crowds of people so there I am standing at the edge of my own oblivion just just in the games with the microphone telling people to come on down and play I like yeah. how that sounds like the perfect name for a band what? saying at the edge of my own oblivion come on because that's what my, my younger brother says that my younger brother would always say uh, he goes Justin and there I was Standing at the edge of my own oblivion. 
please make that into it. Like, I know you love punk music, but please, for your for your like punk band Sona, do that. My punk band Sona, yeah, I probably I'll probably do something. That'll be fun. Okay. Um, Acro had a question about like what rides. Oh, uh, I mean, I at uh, Despicable Me. That was me. <laughs> Welcome to Gru's house. Welcome to Gru's house. Yeah. That's where I met all my closest friends, believe it or not. I was so lucky that time around that, like, for that job, I met, like, my lifelong friends. Oh, it's that's that's insane, dude. Like, because you because at Six Flags, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But, like, at Universe, well, those are my lifelong friends. <laughs> oh, well, despicable me. Yeah. And then I worked at a, after Six Flags, I worked at a, the Museum of Natural History, where I met the RJ. This is true. We, he saw me drawing, uh, I saw him drawing in the break room, and I was like, that's a rad T-Rex. And he's like, it's for Jurassic Park. I was like, no way! And I showed that. I was working on the same thing. <laughs> at that point, we knew we were Jurassic Corps mates. This like, is we true. Knew. This is true. We were the gentlemen. Yes. League of Extraordinary Chaotic and Gentlemen. Gentlemen. This is true. We are. Um, oh, uh, what's your least favorite ride at Six Flags? That's a question from Ruiz. All of all of them. Oh, uh, Acro. Just... Acro says I got a thing for theme parks. It's so cool, cool to hear about them. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, they're they're very they're very 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 interesting and very unique places to work at. I have not been back at Six Flags since. Uh, I quit that place on the spot because um, it was a very interesting place to work at. My last day there, believe it or not, RJ, was the day before I started at the Museum of Natural History. Oh, wow. Yeah. No uh, no two weeks do it. I didn't even tell anybody. I was just like, out. Yeah. Oh, there's also a just question directed at you. Wait, which six flags have only been to one, but still, unless you don't want to say. Balls in your cup. Oh, I mean, they know. I mean, they know we're in Los Angeles, dude. Like, yes, yeah, so it's like the it's only. Six... Gonna be, it, yeah, so it's gonna be Six Flags in Texas. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got a. I got a. I got a horrible sense of humor. It's yeah. The uh, the one out here. I'm never gonna go back. I don't blame you. Okay, cool. I like how these two heads have different personalities. I'm pulling a very big Kevin. What you want? Exactly. I'm pulling a very big Kevin. Kev. Exactly. I'm doing a Kevin. Kevin, yes. This is the. Um, don't want to do a tangent. Always be aware of tangents. They sneak up on you. You never know. Please, tangents are our middle name, dude. Yeah. I'm trying not to be anymore. That's the thing. I'm trying to get professional. This king, I am professional. You're very professional. Would you consider us all professional, our dear viewers? <laughs> if not, go ahead and just be tell, honest. Yeah, just, just be up. Blast us. <laughs> tell us. Tell us no. Yeah. Yeah. We're tr we try. Kevin and Kenneth. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That is perfect, Kenneth, Kevin and Kenneth. Because, but Kenneth, you have to like say with like an accent, something prestigious. You know, prestigious. prestigious. He's not just. He's not just uh, Kenneth. He's Ken Kenneth. Kenneth. <laughs> and Kevin is just Kevin. Kevin. He just vibes. You know, he's a vibey boy. You know, mood. Yeah, so Kevin was the victim of society. This is true. <laughs> Cas casually roars in a British accent. Interesting. So, so it would be like roar, 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 but roar. in italics. Roar. That's more roar. That's so I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, we are pretty funny. Yeah, we're a riot. 
laughing riot. Um, okay, so just. Mm, I don't like this one. <laughs> we will listen back to the audio and just hear us like trying to roar in British. Yeah, please nobody make a cap of that. Hey, we're too late. You said it. You, all I had to do is be quiet. <laughs> oh, yes. Duderson says, for real, both of you conduct yourselves in very humble and professional ways. It's very approachable without being, like, uncaring, you know? Oh, for you, said too late. We're, we're, you know, we're forever going to have this scene. <laughs> we're forever going to be known as Kevin and Kenneth. Kevin and Kenneth. But yeah, that's very nice of you, Duderson. We just, you know, we kind of strive to be uh, the Bob Ross and LeVar Burden of creature design. Which ultimately, would look, look, we just want people to know that like, hey, we were very much like you and still are like you, the the beginning artists, the, the person seeking community with artists and whatnot. And we know how it feels, and we just want you know to people to know that hey, you know, they're friends. You have friends, and if you have, want advice on you know your creature craft and your designs and your world building, you know, yeah, talk to us. You know, have fun. We want you to embrace all aspects of your humanity and and just have fun with it. You know, and create cool stories that are endemic to who you are and speak to the things you want to see in your designs. I also want to let you all know that you're all human. Yeah. You know, nobody, we're not, you're not perfect. Everything you learn takes over time. So do not be too hard on yourself. Exactly. Wish I learned that. Well, I'm still learning that. Okay. Wish I heard that yeah. at an earlier age, but hey, I'm learning it that, now. Kind of what our plan is, huh? We kind of, we, we want those to be able to, basically what we were told or we learned later on, we want to be able to tell people or, you know, learning, art, you know, artists learning later, you know, earlier so that you can, um, the earlier you understand those concepts and you, you know, you're able to, the earlier you're able to gain more self-confidence and, uh, uh, trust yourselves more and be willing to push yourselves to, um, to find, you know, to do what makes you happy. You know, this the earlier true. you're able to do that and understand that, the better, you know, this is the true. easier it is for you. Oh, okay. Hold on. That's an app. Uh, two things. Did you said, welcome. Did you said, welcome back. And Duter sense oh, that's welcome. a, that's an app description though. I'd wager it's more LeVar Burden and Mr. Rogers. Okay. Got me curious. Duderson, uh, who is LeVar Burden in this and who is Mr. Rogers? There's no wrong answer. We both win because these are both beautiful human beings to be compared to Justin. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, it's very, very humble. Oh, uh, real quick. Uh, Rui says, last thing I want to share is going to be, uh, is remember the Dilophosaurus man for my series? Yes. The Dilophosaurus man, I think. I just remember that hybrid one from the universe. I do remember. That's what I was going to say. I remember that one, too. That one's cool. Yeah, that was scary. It was terrifying. It scared me. It gave me nightmares. But if it's gonna be... Yes, it was. But if it's going to be in your series, that's pretty rad. It's always good to kind of see a callback to like all aspects. Make of... Horror Nights canon. Oh my god, do it! Reese, do it. Can you imagine? In... I believe in you. Do it. Please. You have the, back... you have the blessings of like uh, the Jurassic Chill core. Because <laughs> RJ and I are doing short films too and so like we got some believe believe it we know we know the we know the struggles we know the we know the vibe the core stuff. we know the vibes okay i gotta move on to like the body because it's i know so right you, you, too much time on the you, you can't uh it's too much fun we're yeah it is too much fun we're just having time we're having a good time this session having a good And that's spoilers for me. I did for my series. No worries. Sick. See? You know what's up, Ruiz. Justin is you're so Justin you're more miss you're, you're more LeVar Burton he's got that chill like passive kindness uh RJ had more full frontal energy than Mr. Rogers carry oh my god that my cry that was actually <laughs> that's very sweet <laughs> so Justin you're you're LeVar Burton I'm Mr. Rogers apparently I don't 
know who that is. I'm sorry. Vorburn reading Rainbow Man. Reading? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Please, uh, please no. Like, you, you must. He's, he's an angel and a saint. And yeah, I, I agree. I, I did, wasn't allowed to watch a lot of what I wanted to watch when I was younger. This is so true. I don't, I don't this know. is true. I don't blame you I for that. I remember reading Between the Lions. Okay, that's a, that's a, not the same show, but a really great show. I, I will commend you for that, though. <laughs> Uh, but hey, if you so get a ch- so the, uh, yeah, <laughs> if you get a chance to look up Reading Rainbow, or you know, or if you ever watch Star Trek: The Next Generation, he's an amazing, amazing dude. He plays. It sounds familiar, Reading he- Rainbow. To clarify, why I, I the past streams is a lot of things I didn't like, a lot of video games and everything to play. Uh, to clarify, everybody, um, my older brother, uh, is um severely disabled, and so when I was a kid, um the tv was kind of geared towards things that he would want to watch uh, otherwise he would kind of get temperamental and upset it's just a part of the, uh, the um kind of the, the condition that he has so there were a lot of things that i didn't um i wasn't exposed to or watch when i was uh, younger uh, as a result of that and um so a lot of things i'm kind of like learn, learning later on in life that's completely fine and i'm here to show you this is <laughs> you're my friend you got it yes you got a friend all right i'm gonna I again i like how we only could do like a second of like singing things oh it's it's oh my god it's it's dr nick <gasps> dr nick and duderson says i love reading dr. between nick the lines is our man i know this is true he, he said oh he's sending a bunch of puppies to us that's that's cute uh dr nick we are sending you hugs from afar hold on real you. quick going up though uh ruiz said season two is indefinite but i'm thinking a group can play with jaws and uh, on on jaws with the with uh es- excavate raptors okay i may not be aware of that it's like raptors that you know uh things also duderson says to you justin uh the show is how kind of a person you are growing up which is true. You're a very lovely human uh, individual, Justin. I try. I try. Thank you. He is. He is, he is the boy. I wonder if it explains why I listen to so much punk rock music. <laughs> My <laughs> teen angst. My your, inner teen angst. 2000 teen angst. Your inner teen angst. Aww. Uh, Nick says, like, how y'all been? Mr. An amazing Michael. human being. <laughs> <laughs> just a just a good old pinto bean man uh to answer your question dr nick just really tired i came straight off of work but other than that i'm chill just vibing trying to get these edge lords looking right oh uh the raptor concept from the lost world there were expert diggers that's cool oh okay interesting i wasn't aware of that see i learned something new every day you really do learn something new every day. Yes. I mean, my, my gosh. Look at this. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, JP4 script, I believe. Cool. What did you send that to me once, didn't you? I did send that to you. JP4 script. Also sent you like the, the Lost yeah. World script that was unused. That was really rad. Oh, maybe that was the one that you sent me. Where had the Carnotaurus fighting the Raptors? Yeah, I think so. I didn't get a chance to completely read it yet. I think I skimmed through a little bit. But... It's a, it's a lot. It's like a whole movie script, so I don't blame you. I I know. Yeah, you you know, like it's so crazy. Like when you're when you get older, like how many, how busy you can get. It's it's insane. I know. We had all the free time, but now we don't. He says, son. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, there's a shop. Oh, there's a shop in Hollywood that sells unused movie scripts. They're so cool. My brother's Star Wars and Lawrence of Arabia. Your brother has... I got my brother's Star Wars and Lawrence of Arabia. That's pretty rad. Wait, what shop is this, Dr. Nick? I, was, I can just walk to this place. You probably could. <laughs> Uh, 
home skillet. Hold on, though. Rui says, my group and I are playing with the idea of a semi-aquatic Tylosaurus for season two. Cool, man. Seems like you got a whole, like, world-building project you got there. Yeah, go ham. Go crazy. Yeah, you know, have you really, fun with it, man. Don't, don't you know, limit yourself. Don't need to. You know, so RJ, considering what kind of articulation are you looking at? Uh, do you think about in this guy? Let me think. Like, and you know, what is something that you want to see in an Ultima Source figure? What kind of articulation? Uh, definitely, it's got to have like good head, neck, and jaw articulation. Um, good hands. They got to be flexy, yes. grabby things. Um, okay, and. Uh, of course in the like they wouldn't be as flexible in the torso i would say but like maybe towards the back of the hip we'd be hyper articulated oh i know we're not saying that's not this is this is given it's gonna be hyper articulated <laughs> but we're just trying to figure out exactly where yeah. that's gonna be you know to kind of make it believable for yeah what this is yeah in a sense hyper okay so the interesting thing hyper articulation oh, educate we, them uh, uh, we, we probably we have mentioned this <laughs> Uh, so hyperarticulation is not always a good thing. Um, depending on the type of material that you use, if you the more articulation, the more friction you're going to need within ball joints, and that would require. But that means that the material sh should not wear down. Mm -hmm. It needs to be very strong. Um, however, strong material is also heavy. So if you put a lot of articulation into something, it might not stand it might not stand up it might be very floppy um and then also if you overdo it it ends up looking like a lobster it looks like a lot of crustacean type of a it looks way too layered um so there you there's usually i so i have a couple of figure reveals coming next week pay attention to those um there's usually a good blend that you could figure out between um uh, uh you know like Soup, sort of what I would consider super articulation, and then um, a floppy like s snake toy. <laughs> this is true. So um, yeah, it just takes a lot of thinking, but we definitely it's going to be very um, yeah. And so the okay, and by the way, and so uh, lots of things I mentioned are also things that I've learned myself. So if you may, if you've seen my Instagram and that very very first Dilophosaurus that I made a long time ago, I think maybe about two years ago, that ball jointed doll Dilophosaurus, um way too much articulation it was really fun and really cool in concept but uh it was too much to where if i actually had put ball like physical ball joints into it they would not have fit um there were too many pieces to be able to produce so it technically would have been very expensive to make uh and then there were things that are also not realistic like rg was saying usually theropods have very stiff torsos the ma majority of the articulation would be actually in the towards the hips oh thank you thank you Dudeson. Um, a majority of the articulation would be actually in the hips where the animal pivots just so that it would get out of the way just enough so that the thigh, the, you know, the knee could come out as it walked. Um, but other than that, you don't, there's not a lot of side to side snaky motion within the torso. Same thing with the neck. Um, it's usually the, there's not a lot of curvature, you know, they have long necks, but they didn't necessarily move like snakes, you know, cause there's a lot of muscle that's usually meant for you know, biting down and bite force, things like that. And that requires really, really strong muscle, which can sometimes be very stiff. Uh, that's like how the Carnotaurus has like a really stiff tail or in different sore pots or they're just really, really stiff musculature. Um, so a lot of things that even though a lot of articulation is fun, some of it's not always realistic. Um, very well but, put. Um, that doesn't mean that, that, yeah, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we can limit ourselves there. We will be, um, we do have ways to be able to put in articulation that is uh, practical and uh, looks organic. So, um, it's it'll be a fun time. It'll be a, it'll be a fun time, and I'll just probably just apply the same articulation methods that I did to the other animals. Not the Dimetrodon. That was a standard articulation. That was a, really a test of material. It wasn't really a finalized figure. But the ones coming next week, or a kind of hint next week, will be. Um, those are more finalized uh, articulation, like double jointed elbows and knees. You know, no glorified statues. Ooh, I know what that means. You folks will find out later in time. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
but no, Justin works really hard. I've seen, I've been uh, privileged to see his uh, laboratory of um, of just concepts for articulation and revolutionizing the action figure. And I have to say, it is the the amount of work and engineering that goes into you know, his figures are is, is breathtaking. Thank you. I'm trying. This is a this is why if you guys have already known the RJ is involved in the uh the chaos effect the retrovival chaos effect line because obviously and you've seen RJ's renders you have to be able to put those into like a physical f figure okay, they're just yeah. it's a whole new taste especially because RJ is really really good at spec Evo concept art and stuff like that so it's it's really fantastic to be able to uh, incorporate RJ's taste and vision. Thank you. I just you know I have uh I like I like my creatures. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, if you have, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, ask RJ and I. You know, with, especially when it comes to sculpting, I do have experience in physical sculpting as well. That's where I started out from. So, uh, if you have any questions there? I, I could probably give you a couple. You know, a little bit of advice. If you do want to start, I do recommend. If so, I do recommend messing around with physical clay, real life, in person clay before you start like digitally sculpting. Um, and I recommend using monster clay because uh, it's a really, really, really good clay. Um, comes in different colors. And um, it's, not the, it's not like polymer clay where you bake it. Uh, in fact, uh, monster clay you actually have to heat up in order to use. Uh, but it's, it works so well, it's, and it's reusable. And it's just really, and you could actually use sandpaper on it too to get really sanded smooth surfaces. So it's, it's just really good all around to be able to understand manipulation of a physical object, you know, and then how you would translate that to mesh, because then when you translate that to mesh, your brain will sort of just, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Ruiz, um, the tro the the troodon, troodon pectinodon, yeah. Okay, so that one right there plays a very, very, very big role behind the scenes in multiple projects. So not just a figure. But that is actually the Troodon, the Herrerasaurus. Those are actually really, really big roles that RJ and I are, the, are actually currently working on. This is true. Um, so, with, so there will be there. There's going to be a little bit more than just an action figure for those. It's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more worth. It's a little bit more. So just wait on those. Wait on those. But it's going to be a. It's going to be a really, really, really fun time. You know, something has survived. You could say. Something has survived and something has been transported to California. Ooh, don't give it away too much. When are you planning on ba when you're yeah when you're planning on baking a sculpture? Is it better to build up the figure using aluminum foil or tape? Um, I usually recommend tape uh, because uh, I mean sorry, I recommend foil because tape um, depending on the tape you could use, that could be very flammable. Um, and I and, and I, I do understand because I also start when I was a kid I started out using um, like polymer clay because it's just it's just really fun polymer clay art. Definitely foil, mostly for the safety factor. It does have a less um, there is a less uh, possibility of it burning, and then not to mention um, tape. That adhesive can come out depending on the tape that you use. There could be adhesive that can release probably fumes that are not healthy. And you don't necessarily want those to sort of be turned into a vapor form. And yeah, Super Sculpey. So Super Sculpey Firm, if you want to try out Super Sculpey, that works out really well. Try out uh, Super Sculpey Firm. Um, but yeah, definitely check out Monster Clay and Super Sculpey. They're very, very close in consistency. The only difference is that Super Sculpey, you are going to have to add a sort of thinner in order to um, get it to the uh, malleability, <laughs> you know, to make it more malleable. Uh, because it does it does come pretty stiff and i'm gonna be honest with you when i used to use that it would hurt my hands like a lot <laughs> but um be prepared to use a thinner and if you have a clay roller that really really does help to be able to knead it together because you do really have to work the clay in order to be able to make it useful uh versus monster clay you can just kind of throw it in the in the microwave and like microwave it for like 10 seconds Thitters. Okay, so they have Sculpey, they do have Sculpey clay um, softener. So not a thinner, but it's a clay softener made by Sculpey. And you just want to add like, it'll literally add like 
a drop or even less than that. Sometimes I would just like dab the top of the nozzle on top of my clay and it would do work just as well. Give them that wisdom. I'm trying. No, you're doing amazing. Also, I added a cool patagium to the back of these legs, like a Satakasaurus. You know, emphasize that ceratopsian DNA in the theropod, which I'm pretty is sure. That the part, is that the part where? Wait, wait, is that the part where it connects like into the tail? You're talking about that kind yeah, of muscular. Yeah, like right uh... here, this kind of little skin flap that goes up into the leg right here. I love that. I absolutely love that. I think I put that someplace here too. You can kind of like just a little bit. It's but like, like, you know, but a patagium do, is like. I love it. I'm pretty sure like the the big theropods have them too. Well. I'm pretty sure, like, most animals... Actually, every animal has got a patagium. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but, like, there's a very specific one I was thinking of, like, for, you know, like, Satakasaurus. It was just like... Ah, uh, okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm going to really kind of thicken this up just a little bit, you know. Because you wouldn't really see, like, you know, like, the leg like that defined, you know, in nature, really. Like, if it's a healthy animal. What's both of your expanded universe JP dinosaurs? Uh, it's a Jurassic. It's a Jurassic World fan film, but it's spirited of uh, the. Um, it's into the spirit of Jurassic Park. It's just basically Jurassic World for continuity purposes, but it's just straight up like, it's straight up more Jurassic Park because that's our thing. Uh, um, but it definitely uh, that's all I can really give you. But um, it's gonna be uh, just you'll just have to wait because it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun time. RJ and I are combining literally because uh, we know special effects, animatronics, and musical development and all that. Why like, not? Or various contacts and yeah. connects that we've you know slowly grown over the years now which is kind of crazy to think about <laughs> yeah it's the benefit of living in los angeles I this, guess, this is know? true there's a lot of creature designers out here and you know it's pretty awesome but um for my project like my uh are you asking if i had a specific jurassic park project because I, I i do technically don't i justin yes you do yeah i have a mm, I wouldn't say it's on the shelf right now, but it's just like something that, you know, I work every now and then is a graphic novel, uh, recreate, uh, a graphic novel rendition of the original Jurassic Park novels. And I've done a couple designs for the dinosaurs. Should I show that? Like, they're fantastic. They're super... Let me see if I can pull, pull out yeah, my Yeah, I mean, Rex. why not? Pull out my Rex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it, I think the Rex is when I first met you. Yeah, I know. You, you, started, well, no, you were doing. Um, I had version yeah. one of that Rex, and then remember I redid it because I <laughs> literally met you, and I was like, okay, this yeah. this guy's amazing. I gotta rethink my own stuff. I'm not gonna lie. Did you did you it know? Was like a, it was like a. It was like a re-inspo. Like we were like inspired. Like oh, we can we can go all out. We can be crazy, yeah. passionate about it. You know. Yeah. Let me see if I can have. Where did it go? It was a. Uh, I feel like when we met, it was validating. It felt validating. It did. It was very validating. Um. So, I just need to open the PNG. I'm gonna open the whole file. Again, this could use some ma minor touch-ups, but it's pretty much there. This is me at full tilt render, like, you know. So I was doing my take on the novel Tyrannosaur. You know, partly outdated, yes. uh, like, you know, for the time, but also accurate. Because like, the idea is just, like, these are genetic chimeras. Like, yeah, there's a percentage of them that's going to be, like, you know, actual T-Rex. But, like, the rest is, like, filled in. So I kind of wanted to play with that exaggerated anatomy. Kind of like a, like a buff super cow. You ever see one of those, like, cows that have that, like... You know, hyper muscle like condition. So it's like this thing is like, well, that's yeah, a, it's a, that's a really strong point. It's like the, <laughs> the idea was is like, well, we're trying to recreate what we think a T Rex looks like, based off what we feel like we want it to be, and so it was just like, okay, so like bright red colors, obviously it's a super big carnivore. Okay, cool. Um, it's, it's got to be ripped. Like, well, it's already ripped, but like, okay, super ripped, <laughs> like like a bodybuilder. So it's like gotta have that exaggerated musculature, you know. Yes. Like the tail is slightly shorter than it should be. The legs are longer than it really would be. Uh, you know, the arms are a little more, you know, uh, comparatively longer and a little more higher up than they should be. But yeah. You know, I did a character sheet too. Uh, 
I, I want, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if we were both working on JP Novel TX. Because you remember my Red Rex that I yeah. was working on too at the same time. I can't, I can't remember if, I, if we were both doing at the same time in the break room. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think we were. And see, I have that cool scene where like it hunts a myosaur in the book, but you know, showing that like this one is using its arms and its mouth. I, I love this pose. This pose was fun to do. I want to see her swim. Oh, uh, yeah. I could do it. What's your, what did you said ask? What was your oh, yeah, RJ, what would your interpretation of the comfy look like? What would yours look like? Oh, you know, it's funny. I never, I haven't drawn one yet, but, um, I should, I, I couldn't do like, I don't want to get too sidetracked because we're working on this one, but I will definitely like do a quick sketch after we like, after we like stay tuned folks, if you hang on until like the end, then I will do a quick little doodle. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, just kind of getting this guy laid in, but you know, there's, there was a lot of them, you know, I mean, pull, I could pull up one of the dilos real quick. Just one last, one little last kind of thing. Um, we also have the Raptor. The Raptor is okay. It needs a little more work. Like the color palette just needs a little more work. You know? Yes. Let me see. Let me see. The Dilo is the. My fear. Oh, let me show. That reminds me. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I should show you something afterwards. <laughs> I was looking at like Birds of Paradise and like, you know, how they kind of flip up their like yes. feathers. Again, super rough. This needs a lot more work. But, you know, trying to keep kind of feels like a, you know, super goth bird of paradise. That's kind of what I was going for. It's like, you know, it, it, you know, I kind of want to pay homage to the um, the frill, the, the one from the movie. But the have, goth. yeah, instead oh. of having it be like, <laughs> like, you know, be like around the neck, it's more like around the back and it lays flat and then it flips up. Yeah, the opening scene is very brutal. Okay. Yes, yes, I kept the spots as kind of a reference, you know, from the original novel. God, Justin, your, your, you know, Ultima Source is looking amazing. It's just a foot. <laughs> I, I'm saying though, like the way you're rendering that claw is really organic. Oh, thank you. I'm trying. It's so weird using uh it's so weird using Photoshop for me. But like I'm glad I'm starting. Thank you for getting me started in this and doing these, especially with the streams, because like this helps. You can also like the cool thing about it is you can you can move in your um your procreate files into Photoshop. That's what I love. I that's how I've been doing uh that's how I've been using my pho uh my, my procreate files. Nice. I have been um doing them that way because uh Yes, I like that. The Photoshop compatibility. You can kind of get a lot of work, cool work done, you know? Yeah, you really could. Doing it this wrong way. Sweet. Yes. Sorry. I was trying to follow the pattern or something. Cool. The theme that my group wants to play for the show is the Jurassic Park Chaos, uh, Jurassic Park Chaos Continues OST. Nice. That's a good one. I like your references. Okay, so actually I'm gonna kind of do this. So as you notice folks, I'm not really doing the osteoderms right now because I'm gonna do that in a separate layer because right now I'm just trying to get the basic head shape and anatomy in. Cause I don't wanna over, be, be overly concerned with that when I'm just gonna go in and erase some details, so. It's all good. Right now I'm just focused on texturing this guy out and just kind of building out his anatomy. And make sure to save your work because I just realized I haven't been saving my work. Oh no, <laughs> this is true. Um, you can set your auto save too. I'll teach you that or if you can set the setting. I just did the control S. I'm super hyped for this show. 
I'm making this the 90s cartoon I feel like JP deserves. Yeah, go for it. Make those fan shows. Isn't that why you did what you do, Justin? Yeah, you know, just, I, I just feel like, yeah, I, and that's why I do what I do. I just feel like with, with Jurassic World, there's just so much more that could have been done. And um, there's so much more that still could be done. And uh, I have no problem in expanding on or uh, completely rewriting certain things. Exactly, you no. Know? Yes, there we go. Oh, Duderson said, odd non sequitur question, but I was checking out different drawing tablets for my PC. What are your thoughts and opinions on X-Pen brand, if any? Or if any recommendations in general? I know DigiZ was also looking into this not too long ago, too. By the way, the violence of the show is going to be holding back, so... Oh, the different question. Rui says, by the way, the violence of the show is going to be holding back, so be prepared. Hey, it's your vision. Go for it. Be violent. But uh, uh fictionally. Um, but uh do you have any answers for Duderson's question, Justin? Uh no, you start out with more more tablets on your end, so definitely answer that. Because I just I just picked one. I just kinda of, no, no worries, no worries. I have a Cintiq, but it's an older model, it's a twelve hundred. Uh, it's pretty good. I just have a standard Cintiq stylus that goes with it. It's very responsive. Um, you know, I... Do you have a screen on yours? Yes, mine has a screen. Yeah, so this whole... like uh, What okay. you see right there on Photoshop, I see on my screen. So I'm drawing directly on it. Same. Me too, me too. Which makes life so much easier. Cause, you but know... also, it's not, it's not completely necessary. They have yeah. smaller compact ones. Keep in mind... The first thing you want to think of is what you can afford, this is true. what you can invest in, because every single thing is, is that is an investment. Yeah, and you um you want to be able to keep your financial uh because you don't want to drop like ten thousand dollars on something that you're not going to completely uh use you don't completely understand yet. Yeah, so maybe best best advice: start with something cheap. Doesn't have to have a screen on it. Do something small, just so you can get used to doing things digitally, and being able to get used to not always having to look down at your um at like the tablet because you want to be able to look at primarily at your monitor yeah we look at our tablets a lot when we when we do sketches and drawing but you primarily want to look at the your monitor because your tablet is not going to give you the same visual resolution that a monitor does you want to be able to keep your eyes on the monitor um so maybe try something first that's actually more or less like just a simple drawing tablet yeah and then when you feel like you can if you have that kind of money to spend then you can go you know a you know uh get yourself the one i have where like the tablet is you know the, st the screen you're drawing on but you have already had practice like before yeah. i even got this i i had the kind of tablets before then and Rui says that by the way the main villain for season two could potentially be the dx infected amargus spinus cool seems like you got a whole entire lore Duerson says thank you and you're welcome buddy yeah you know what's been my, my lately at my 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 skull okay so lately I just I've been just obsessed with sculpting wrinkles and like folds and like of different animals. I, just, I don't know why I mentioned that right now. It's just so random, but I was just cuz I'm drawing these knees right here and and uh one thing I have just been enjoying drawing lately on or sculpting lately on my figures is like sort of where the meat on their legs, the kind of the fat and everything bunches up a little bit down towards their knees. Yeah. Uh and I just love drawing. I just love sculpting it. It's so much fun. I don't know why. I'm well, just, because it adds kind of it's like so much fun. I guess you could say believability of like the weight and how the muscle ripples underneath and what's moving. You know, like the understructure. Yeah. Also, oh my... yeah. Real quick, did you said says my Cintiq got me through college, but it's starting to show my age. I'm not gonna lie, mine is too. But I need to save up to get one. I need to get an iPad myself. 
because I need to get procreate so I can, you know, draw on the go. On the go, yes, definitely. Don't get me wrong. I, I have my trusty sketchbook on me at all times. I would always say this too, folks. I, I really want to advocate this. Don't get me wrong. It is going to be primarily, I'm not saying all the time, and I'm not saying it's the end-all, be-all. But if you're trying to get professional, you're going to be mostly working in digital art. But I will yeah. say this. I will say this. Don't let that shirk on your traditional art skills, though. It is so imperative and so freeing to be able to sketch in your sketchbook any idea that you have at any hour, any time, and then move that into you know digital if you want to refine it or do something more with it. But you know, really show love to your traditional skills. Paint, draw, anything, sculpt. It really just helps enrich whatever you're doing. And if a great quote I heard is like, the moment you start drawing your sketchbook the same as you start drawing on the tablet, the moment you you really got a good understanding um yeah yes. like for, for example yes. my drawings right here look the same in my sketchbook yeah maybe some things are a little uh different every now and then but at the end of the day if you move them over to one to the other you know you can't really tell them apart my style looks you know synonymous across both because i practice both you know i practice my thumbnails uh the same as my sketchbooks you know it's really good and when you get that you know there's a great, I guess you could say, uh, what would be the word I'm looking for? You get a good sense of synergy, uh, synergy between your styles. I knew you were going to say that word, synergy. Yes, I knew you were going to say that. I know. It's a corporate term. Anyway, I would say, but still, you get a good sense of cohesion, you know? Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree? I agree more. There we go. Yeah, it's a freeing God, they look so spiky. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been doing that to like the, the really, really rough texture on them and everything like that. It's so much fun. I like how Ken and Kenneth, you know, both have distinct head shapes now, even though they both look like they're the same, you know, of the same material. Yeah. So it is official. We're calling them Ken and Kenneth. Yeah, no, that's the official names for them, Ken and Kenneth. Yes. I'm so excited for this figure. I like to think that sometimes with these figures, we sort of like, we kind of make like a, like, well, especially, well, especially with this upcoming Ultimasaurus, because uh, this is like the big one, you know, like there, we make, there's a sort of canon aspect, you know, like when we make this, making a figure, it kind of makes it like, like this is, that's kind of my intention to uh, kind of I, I always wanted to make a figure that like or a creation that becomes the thing that people think of when they think of like a particular Jurassic Park animal just because I really I always wanted to create a canon Jurassic animal you know that's cool I think we're doing it for ourselves I think that's kind of our plan with this one too exactly yeah I think this is a I think this hopefully people will think that our combined creature our final one will feel kind of official you know in a way I agree. No, I, I agree. I think that uh, that figure that uh, that power, you know, hopefully. We didn't have enough respect for that power, and it's out now. Oh my gosh! Yes. Yeah. Grant. Such a fantastic! I love that. I just love that. I love the movie. It's so good. I'm sorry, guys. I just I love Jurassic Park. Oh, Rui saying is going to give you advice coloring the Ultimasaurus as someone who owns the figure. I'm sure, if you want. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. To be honest, we couple, though, we have a couple. Like, we have a couple ideas. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, if you, I mean, we're we're you know, we like a discussion. Yeah. Is there a quote from Jurassic Park that you like or went over your head when you were younger? Uh, yeah, Ian Malcolm. 
when Alan Grant says if he has any kids, <laughs> and he says, yeah, yeah, he loves kids. Anything that Alan does have them, and I was like, oh, I didn't notice that as a kid. Later on, I was like, oh, for me, oh, okay. for me, it was wow, like, I see you, Malcolm. For me, it was like I'm looking, always looking for a future uh, uh, ex, Mrs. Uh, Malcolm. Um, was it Malcolm? Like, wow. Conversation went over our heads when we were younger, didn't it? Oh gosh, I love it. Um, hold on. Acro said, "I feel like the part of the definitive interpretation game is just getting there early. You really got to hit out the park to take the crown late." This is true. This is true. But you know what? We're here on our own terms. Yeah, you know what? I think if anything, this could be definitive to us. You know, I can take that. Oh yeah, Rich. Rich Owen likes supervillains. That's fine. This guy's a supervillain. Yeah. Like this, the supervillain. This is like the most like supervillainy you know creature. The Giga Chat of supervillains. Also, uh, Rui says, "All right, the yellow on the face is important because on the figure they are applied in a threatening sort of way." Yeah. Definitely, you know, I intend to keep the yellow as a pattern, but we do want to experiment. A great yes, thing about yeah. a great thing about color design is that you also should really, you know, take chances and go left field. You know, when you're making an interpretation of something, that's the thing. You're using what was as a guide. You don't need to be too married to it. You know, take things and take chances yeah. to kind of see yeah. where you want to go with it. It's all about visual development and design process. Definitely, though, I agree. The yellow in the face is something I really enjoyed. We had a discussion about one episode of keeping the yellow in the face, but the red was going to be a completely different aspect that Archie had a really great idea yeah, for. Yeah, I'm going to have it like where it's two-toned, where it, you know it's relaxed and kind of more flesh-colored and you know, than that. But when it's more angry and aggro, it flushes blood to its face to kind of give it that kind of dark, vibrant red kind of feel. So dynamic. I feel like uh, people are big fans of Hell Raptor, and he's made tons. Of... I remember that person. Not, I didn't never knew that person personally, yeah. but I, I know that name. I love his work. Did he? Did he? Did he come back? I, I know he said that he was jumping off of social media because of, I guess, like the algorithm or something like that. I, I guess it was maybe getting too difficult. I'm not too sure, but uh, I hope everything with him is okay or them. You know, Hell Raptor. So I really enjoyed their work. I I liked um, T Pex. That was years ago. That was the Jurassic Park fan site. Imagine this material coming down to like the, the base of the tails, like the handle, quote unquote. Yes. Looks stiff. And just barbed. Ah, Acro says I don't have any current idea about the current robots. I just see people talk about them after a deal. Um, we talked a long time ago. One of my favorite, like, uh, like early like creature design artists was uh, Rodrigo Vega. It was like the kind of weirdly enough, I think that was like the tap wing of like our era. If you know, familiar with tap wing from like the Isle. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I just remember seeing their art every now and then. I just remember watching... Um, I think I saw, like... Yeah. I kind of get that feeling, too. Emulates Vega, especially with his, like... I think a, a big influence of Vega to me, and even Tapwing, is that, like... a exaggerated poses uh like the but like not exaggerated with like making up anatomy just like pushing like a gymnast or like someone or a martial artist where like someone's pushing their body in an extreme pose you know that's what he did with creatures and i will never forget that i love that so much but yeah and yeah ruiz like we're, we're happy that you know we, we love to represent what we grew up with so you know chaos effect was big to us you know yeah it's so it was just so out of pocket <laughs> as the kids say nowadays it was chaotic it was like it didn't need to happen but they were like let's do it anyway before you even knew what you had that you're selling it <laughs> hmm 
Mary Angular, I think your artwork is a bit reminiscent of Vega as well, RJ. Thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. That guy is amazing. <laughs> But as I said, my next mission, I'm going to draw more chunky dinosaurs. I love the angles, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I can do... I want to be able to make sure I can draw anything. Besides, I've been wanting to. Not everything has to be... I think, Rush. you know, after this kind of edgy murder uh, murder machine, I need to draw like some cute like Leonigosauruses and Sitakosauruses jumbling around in the bushes or something. <laughs> well, Duerson says, speaking of, do you remember the show Chaotic and their creature designs? Isn't that like that show that was kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh? Michael, oh, man, you, yeah. Michael Skrepnik. He's probably one of my favorite paid artists, so I feel like his work is underrepresented. Uh, let me see that real quick. Also, we're at six viewers, man. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Ah, yes, I am familiar with this paleo artist. I do know this paleo artist. I just didn't know their name, but lovely, 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 love their work. I remember seeing that. Who are they? Uh, remember that? Um, I don't think it's the same one. Uh, hold on, I'll, I'll send you something in the Discord. Okay. Well, if I do that, actually, we'll lose the thing. So I'll send you two later. But it's a, it's. I think you'll you'll know this artist. Like me and you both have seen this artwork before. I know we have. Yeah, sure thing. Definitely. Yeah, yeah I know this artist. Okay, cool, cool. Good choice. One of my favorite paleo artists of all time is Mark Hallett. And Zoo Books is one that got me. I think I've said that many times, but like I will, I'll forever, you know, sing the praises. <laughs> Just have that very graphic style that I kind of enjoy. Don't get me wrong, though. I like. I think a big thing for me, you know, especially nowadays, it's like I really want to. And I actually am working on something that's going to be cool. Got some, uh, can't say exactly the details, but I do want to hint to you good fine folks that I am going to be working on some actual museum work. I won't say which museum, but um, yeah, <laughs> we'll be doing some cool works for that. Um, and it's going to be paleo, uh, proper paleo art, and I'm going to really tap into more of my fine arts kind of background. Hmm? Yes. Like, little you know, folks, I'm actually a really big nerd when it comes to, like, you know, Impressionism and, like, Art Deco and Baroque. Did you know that, Justin? Yes, I did. Yes, you did. Of course you did. Because <laughs> I, go, I go, go about, like, out influences my paleo art all the time. <laughs> like, let me, let me pull up my pterosaurs, like, you know, that was kind of more like National Geographic. That was more like uh, Gersh-inspired kind of things, but still, I love that piece so much. Hold on, let me see if I can find flying things. Nope. Um... Oh, have you taken any art history classes? Yes, I've taken a bunch, especially for my major as visual development and pre-production. I had to take a bunch to even get to this point. Um, thank you, thank you. It's gonna be really cool. Also, uh, Ruiz asked a question to us, Justin. What is our favorite dinosaurs in general? Uh, oh, mine's Carnotaurus, flat out. I did that. Uh, I did a whole paper on paleo uh, reconstruction of a Carnotaurus for like 
a class when I was doing my geology degree. Nice. I did like a whole reconstruction of the carnivores. And oh, also answer that que previous question too. I I uh, had to take art history classes as well for my associate's degree. Yes. When I'm doing, gotcha. yeah. What about you, RJ? For me, uh, I'm super basic. I love Tyrannosaurus Rex, um, but I love them. All right. Uh... <laughs> but but I love them as you know more accurately as they are understood today as gigantic Komodo dragon pit bulls that are just chubby and cute. Uh, they would probably well wow. an adult one probably would ignore me unless it was starving, but like a juvenile would probably kill me. Uh, my point is though, I would like to cuddle and pet one, but. Would that ever happen? Probably no. Of course, they're dead, but I'm saying if I could, um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, these are my tyrannid <laughs> these are my pteranodons, uh, you know, pteranodontids. I think they were undescript, but I had them flying over the, you know, the great interior seaway of Tethys. Uh, yeah, this is fun. I was going for like kind of a postcard, National Geographic kind of thing. It took me forever to paint this thing, but I loved learning about it. You know, got the. This is my favorite part right here, making the veins of the wings. That was so fun, making the the temperature from warm to cold as heat would exchange to the wing itself. Um, the colors and palettes and whatnot. I looked at a bunch of models and referenced their eyes, and then adding this cool graphic texture over it and the clouds, the sky itself. You know, the land was fun to do. But yeah, the, the, all this was just like. I didn't make that one to a trading card. Uh, you know, I might. You never know. The cool thing is about like my my uh, dinosaur designs. I actually canonize them, as in like when I do them, I like to pull from reference. You know, like as in my mm -hmm. like my pterosaurs, I'll make some minor changes, but this would pretty much be like the color palette for them. Yeah. You know? For like not yeah. every pterosaur, but I'm talking about for this specific pterosaur. Like this will. This is their canon look. Uh, when I do my reconstructions for, for myself, like, but if I'm doing others, you know, of course I'll take in consideration of like what they want to do, but I like to kind of have this consistency between, you know, my scientific, uh, reconstructions. Let me pull up my triceratops really quick. Like this is an older piece, but you know, I really loved it. Um, it taught me a lot. Like there's a lot of things that are, they need to be updated, but like as an overall piece, it's a much older one, but I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> And Allosaurus is a great choice. We all stand Big ah, Al here. Juicy boy. We all stand. We all big... stand our strange, our strange boy, big strange boy. Uh, do you guys have any advice for paleo art? Because though I'm still learning, I am 15. Mine don't usually have the same grace as yours does. Uh, do you want to take this, Justin, or do you want me to? Practice, 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 practice. Keep going, practice, keep practicing, keep practicing, keep going, keep practicing. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it and be willing to learn from others. Be willing to make mistakes. Be willing to learn from those mistakes and be willing to understand that you're human and you're going to keep learning until the day you die. Exactly. You're not going to get it in like three days. I will say this to add on to that. Um, art is a bunch of failure. Art is just a lesson in yes. failure. And that's fine. Embrace it. You know, you're not going to get it off the bat. We didn't get it off the bat. When I was 15, I wasn't drawing like this. You know, I'm nearly 30. It took me this long to, you know, do that. And I'm going to keep drawing. By the time I'm 50, I'm going to be drawing even more impressive work. But that's the thing of it. Art is a step stool of progress. It is a, is a staircase of progress. You may think you're plateauing. You're just getting ready to hit the next step uh, because you think you're not growing. No, you're about to hit the next step and that's going to be growing. And then you're going to hit another plateau and then you're going to grow again. And you don't realize how many steps you've already taken and how much you've already progressed. Think about how much you've already done compared to where you were at seven, you know? And you've probably progressed yes. a lot. By the time you're my age, you're going to be doing a lot more impressive things. By the time you're older than me, you're going to be doing a lot more impressive things. So long as you keep at it. The thing about art, mm -hmm. it's a constant practice about failing fast, understanding what your tastes are. Understand your tastes, I should say that. Understand them in a fundamental way, you know? Do master studies. Practice new techniques. Get out of your comfort zone. Art is about experimentation, mm -hmm. about being messy. You know, if you feel like you're getting too comfortable in something, do something different. Draw in an art style. Understand an art style that you may not do because you might find something there that may help you in your own stuff. You know, I remember when I was like, you know, starting off, I was like, man, I got it all figured out or like I want this specific style. No, be versatile as an artist. You know, that will give you the greatest, you know, diversity of like what you want to do. 
and have fun with it. That's the most important thing I can say to you. Have fun with it. Don't yeah. lose the funness of what this is. You know, when you were drawing, when you were like little, you did this because it was fun, exciting. It got your imagination working. Keep that spirit. And I'm saying keep understanding that spirit. You know, what I would say to you is just like, don't be so concerned with others. And I'm not saying you're not going to. You're a human being. And specifically, you're an artist. We all do. We all compare mm -hmm. each other. To our friend, even our friends, we do that. I compared myself to Justin before, you know. I still do sometimes because he's really cool. Uh, huh? I know exactly. You're an amazing artist, you know. But that's what we do sometimes. But at the same time, I understand Justin is my friend, and also he's gone through his journey. He has his own things he's working on. I have my own things too. You know, we inspire each other and we help each other grow. You know. And then speaking of the present tense, we also see our current journey. So our, our, even right now, Arj and I, we both see, we both see each other. We, we see each other when, when we're struggling. We even voice each other like, I can't get this right. This is annoying me. Or like, I'm trying. We even see each other try. So like, we're still, we're still trying. Yeah. We're still practicing. We're still doing it. And you will never stop. And, and to recognize that that's the best part because it will always be an adventure. It will always be a learning experience. It will never bore you embrace that embrace every single little new thing that you're going to learn it's going to be great but you just have to let yourself have it let yourself be creative and just even you're going to be afraid don't you know we no, you know being afraid is you know a, literally just a part of being human whether it be a career opportunity or starting a new project but try to learn to embrace the fear as a new challenge exactly. embrace the challenge it's fun it's Every, going to be great everyone but has fear you know, learn that with practice Exactly. To add on to that, everyone has fear, but courage is acknowledging that and still acting. Um, yes. Exactly. So have the courage to be bold. Experiment with your art. Just don't box yourself in. You're young. Like you said, what, you're 15? Dude, you have time. You're in an amazing time oh, period yeah. for art and young creatives and, you know, exploring new things. Explore all of that, you know. Yeah. What you think is your, your, like, I remember when I was your age, it's like, this is my style. And it wasn't within like three years. Because that's the thing. Don't be so locked into what you think style is. Style is the substance of process. Focus on your process. By process, I mean focus on your fundamentals, your way of doing things. Style, to quote, I forget exactly who said this, but it's a great quote anyway. Style are the mistakes you choose <laughs> to keep. You know, that's what style is. Mm -hmm. When you understand something fundamentally and you choose to do something a specific way, that is your style. And you don't really, you know, it's not something you consciously do. It's just when you're in the, the nature of doing your work, you know, it appears. So just have fun. Take it easy. Be gentle with yourself. Give yourself that space. And you got this. You're going to do great. And that goes for everyone in this chat, you guys, and um, you guys, gals, whoever you may be, you got this. You know, we're here for you too. Anytime. Never feel, um, never hesitate to ask out, ask any questions. We got you. Isn't that right, Justin? Yeah, definitely. I think the reason we have this attitude as well is because we, we've taken art classes before and we've taken art with art teachers who are not necessarily inspirational, but more or less kind of like pretentious. And <laughs> that kind of could draw, that kind of could put a dull factor on your, uh, on your, uh, outlook on your work you know you're like oh i don't want to you know like it's not it doesn't make it fun learning anymore yeah remember when i was in when i was started community college back in first year community college back in 2013 uh i uh an art teacher where i and we were waiting for him waiting for them to show up and he walked in he said you do not know how to draw until you take my class and i was like wait oh what? no this is not this is a, he was, but he was a funny guy. He was like, he had to been like in his seventies, and he had like full tattooed sleeves, and he wore like aqua like jeans, and had a beanie and like Ray Bans and everything, and he played like all this rap and everything during class. He was so edgy. It was, 
he was like teen angst, but like in his seventies. Um, but regardless, like it wasn't necessarily an experience experience that made me feel kind of like a positive note on art, you know. Um, so that's I feel like that's why I feel like Arjun and I we try to be very uh kind of positive and truthful about you know about learning art and stuff like that, but very uh, uh very but uh very honest about that you are more more than capable than you know exactly you, know, that you, you will get there it will take time but we really do want you to be able to enjoy the journey because uh we don't want you to miss out on anything we don't want to miss you out on the little things that you're gonna you're gonna surprise yourself the little things that are gonna you're gonna figure out that works for you that's why we like don't rush it don't try to focus on style you know like we want all those unique experiences that are gonna happen specifically for you and we want you to be able to just take all those in and be excited nice also two three things duderson says thanks mr rogers and mr burden you're welcome <laughs> Oh, thank you. Uh, did you said said you perfectly described my 3D modeling teacher lol down to the beanie. That's a vibe. Um, Rui says this stream easily the most entertaining thing that has happened this week already. Oh, thank you, buddy. Glad to be you know. Oh my goodness, thank you. And then due to some same with my sociology prof. It'd be like that's that. just gonna be great. I swear. And then sometimes they're just like okay. You know, it'd be like that sometimes though. Uh -huh. You know. And you got a thing, a relationship with, you know, a teacher, you know, you got to find someone who understands you too. You know, they're people, they're going to have their own notions of living too. So let's also remember that as well. But still, if you recognize something, it's like, yeah, this is not conducive for me. That's fine. Recognize that. Mm -hmm. I remember having to leave some classes because like, I realized that this class is not for me because like, you know, and not because the <laughs> subject was wrong. It's just like the person delivering it wasn't really like you know being as open or vibey to what i was trying to get out of it and that happens that just happens you know? yeah but once you find a good teacher yeah. i mean yeah they go a long way it's like life change you know like my teachers that like yeah. really help me sometimes you don't but no. that's okay <laughs> no it is and sometimes it is, sometimes you know but when i'm just saying when you do as someone like i'm saying from my own experience mm -hmm. i have been lucky enough to have had teachers like that amazing you know and you get like cool you know uh what was your guy's favorite part of science if you enjoyed science um, for me zoology biology learning about animals sorry i'm a little bit obvious did you say <laughs> huh that made me laugh because i thought you said edibles for a second i mean <laughs> animals okay animals i was like uh wait a sec no no we're trying pg for the kiddos um yes that's true my favorite favorite part favorite part of science if you enjoyed science oh my gosh you know what my favorite part um i really enjoyed uh i really enjoyed the field studies so in field geology you had to go camping a lot to be able to go see outcrops you know in person and um the camping and then for our, our senior our for your senior year for when you're when you're finishing up your degree uh you have to do summer field and you have to camp for like a few weeks and you're hiking you're like showering like never like you sometimes will go like a couple weeks without showering and it's just it's it's like a crazy horrible experience but you make like such good friends and you're looking at cool rocks and stuff rocks and that's kind of the fun rocks dude it sounds like a rocks, rocks. bro dude we had, we had like there was like a for not a fraternity but like i know that because we had a couple of jockey guys in our class and um we called Called them the Rock Brothers. <laughs> the Rock because Brothers. they were just like very, uh... yeah, because they weren't a fraternity, but they acted like a fraternity. They were like the bros, you know. Gotcha. They're the bros. They the liked all the heavy stuff. Yeah, they liked the hydrogeomorphology and things like that, and like the really, they like the heavy stuff, you know. I like how they are the, the they are the the jocks of the rock uh, world. Yes, they were Alpha Beta Rock. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, wouldn't it be, uh, wouldn't it be igneous basalt something? Those are all, uh, those are all, <laughs> I'm sorry. Those are terrible rock puns. Oh my gosh. That would crack me up though. Igneous <laughs> because it, because it, so, it, it I just, I'm sorry. I, I can imagine it cracked you up. Yeah, it cracked me up like a 
It cracked. It cracked me up like conchidal fractures. Exactly. The end. <laughs> God, we're, we. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Uh, you know, also, I, I like a lot of these because I also play Minecraft. So a lot of it is just like I just love rocks, like in Minecraft too. Rocks are a vibe. Also, I love um, some deep slate. <laughs> Du Duderson said, "Hoofing it, it's always a blast. This is true. Being on the field is always fun." Um, yes, Rui yes. said, "I am so hyped to learn about evolution in biology because that's my thing. It is a vibe. I loved learning about evolutionary science and biology and how animals change over long periods of time in their environment. You know, uh, it was my favorite thing. I gave a presentation about protoceratops." And fossilization. And that really heavily inspired a lot of your spec Evo or art, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You know, I really, I actually was going to go, like, okay, I, when I was in community college for an, a very long time because of, uh, you know, reasons, more so just no one really knew to replace me. I, um, without getting into too many details, nothing bad. It's just more so like, um, I had a lot of interests, you know, science and art were my interests. Oh, real quick though, let's look at these rock puns. Did you said, hey, you shouldn't take that rock puns for granted. This is true. Uh, my pet rock loves the Rolling oh my Stones. Gosh. See, see what we've done here. This is the true. This is our true mission, folks. We gotta bring the rocks uh, to prominence. RJ, next time you visit, I'm gonna show you my rock collection. Show, dude, I would love to. Just show, show me the rocks, man. Show me, show me the rocks. Anyway, uh, when I now that's a cluster of puns. Some might call it Ulithic. That was good. Oh my gosh. Just, 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 I could feel you roll that your was, eyes at that one. <laughs> that, that is, oh my gosh. I am, you know, I, I, I'm actually, I actually really love that one because I haven't seen any like, <laughs> in, a, in a, like three years. So that was very, very, very nice. You just I want, actually really liked you just that got, one. You just got, you. you just got Jurassic Justin's respect. How do you feel about the Duderson? <laughs> Dude, I love puns. Yeah. I love puns. I don't know why people always think that puns are like, like cringy like puns are the best I, I, I want people to be punny all the time dude they're amazing it's a great pun anyway um <laughs> anyway um keep going shut up oh. there's there's no such thing as an opal rock pun my god we're gonna be here forever uh anyway get back real quick um i was uh, before I, I finally uh settled and relaxed and decided you know what i'm gonna do visual development pre-production and just you know focus on my arts i actually i do have like a minor in science mm -hmm. uh i have two two aas and i'm just focusing on one bfa right now but i was gonna go for either i think i told you before back then it was like either paleontologist like yourself or like evolutionary biologist um what killed me was the math because i'm not the greatest at math you know um uh I know. Gosh. I kind of, I kind of live that stereotype of the artist that's not good at math. You know, I can, I can accept that for me. Um, not saying that all art, like there are artists who are like fantastic at math. I'm just saying I am terrible at math. You know, if you are super sick at it, go for it. You know, that's awesome. I appreciate that. I'm not someone that hates math either. I was like, no, it's super sick. I'm just, I don't know. I'm not good with numbers. <laughs> Especially when you add the alphabet to the to the it's thing, it's useful. It's so useful. oh, yeah, it's, it's super cool. Don't get me wrong; it is oh amazing work. You know, especially when you know you use it for like engineering and then apply it to your art. It's awesome. Like, don't get me wrong; I could get by. You know, I'm not saying I don't want to learn. You know, I'm just saying I, my strength. Though, we love the metric system. Yeah, but my my saying my strengths are you know different. So I, you know, finally was like in a position where like you know my advisor finally was like you know. Like be real with yourself. You really just want to draw the cre the things that you know you see from a science from a scientist. It's like you, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I hope maybe like here's the thing for me. Uh, when I was going through it, like to be in geological sciences, I had to go through like you know what stats and like what was it? What was it for you? Well, no, actually, Justin, you could speak to this, sir. Um. About the math. Oh, like Ruiz is asking. <laughs> oh wait. wait, wait. There's more math than paleontology. <laughs> Yes. So to keep in mind, if you want to go into the sciences or natural sciences, the highest math you do have to take is um, physics. You have to take mechanical physics uh, simply because you do – because – okay, so in, paleont in paleontology itself, unless you are going to a school also that ha specifically is geared towards paleontology, there is no one way to go specifically to paleontology. It's usually like a, a, like a huge kind of just – 
I'm a, the geology term is like a conglomerate of a bunch of uh, of a bunch of different um, studies, like 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 RG took like zoology or evolutionary biology, but it also takes a lot of geology because you don't want to be a paleontologist with a bad geology the bad geology background because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of dating that comes and a, a lot of um, uh, paleoclimatology and paleo environments. And that's actually particularly why I took geology so I can understand paleo environments to better be able to illustrate what a dinosaur probably looked like. Um, you do need to know these things. Uh, so yeah, the highest the highest math you got to take is like physics, um, but mechanical <laughs> physics within a university standard. Um, okay, you took normal physics. Okay, well, um, if you took normal physics in ninth grade, most likely be able to be able be able to apply that to a degree if you've already taken it. So you're able to just get that out of the way. But it's because you do have to um, within animals. There's even bio biophysics of animals, and like I know in Allosaurus, they had a whole study on like the the biophysics of the of like the neck of the neck the neck muscle and everything. So to be able to do things like that, it does require a lot of math. Um, when I did it, I, when I so my original degree is in art, in fine arts and studio arts, and then when I transferred to uh, to university. Uh, I switched my major entirely. So I had a degree in art, but I switched it over to geology. So there was a lot of prerequisites I needed to catch up on. So while I was taking all of my uh, coursework at the university, right after my classes would end, I would take night classes or like weekend classes at the local community colleges to catch up on math. While I was doing like geology classes, I was also doing like trigonometry and, and or yeah, like stats and trig and pre-calculus and calculus and then physics and all my chemistry classes and all of that because you do need all of those. You do need chemistry and physics at minimum. Uh, so be prepared for those. Uh, try to get those done as early as you can because they can be very, very demanding. That way you could just focus on just your studies um, because all those other things are prerequisites you do just you just really want to get those out of the way in advance um that way you don't you just don't have to you don't deal with all that stress because when it comes to the actual science stuff and everything it is a lot of work it is a lot of thinking especially if you are in a subject that is applying something that you learned in a physics class a chemistry class or anything like that to your work which you will have to do in paleontology um paleontology natural sciences regardless so uh just try to get those out of the way it helps it definitely helped with it. It would have helped when I was having to figure out calculating gravitational anomalies. So also, definitely, yeah. No, no worries. I don't mean to interrupt, but we have two things. Um, uh, sure thing. Rui says, but no, seriously, I'd love to be a paleontologist. Also, did you said, do you need a degree to help out a dig site or cleaning fossils? Uh, no, actually, that's a cool thing. Um, most fossil labs cool. need volunteers. Yeah, uh, Libre Tar Pits. Uh, that's where R RJ was working in the fossil lab. Yes, I was. And I didn't, you know, of course I had my degrees for like an AA, but like, you know, I didn't need anything else. You're just a volunteer, a lab tech volunteer. So you're not doing anything crazy, but you know, all you do is clean bones. You know, for me, it was just kind of like, you know, chemical cleaning some tar pit bones. They were cool. Um, but yeah, I got, because of that though, I got lab tech experience, which is something that looks really good on a resume going forward. So when you eventually do graduate your yeah. degree, you can actually go for those jobs if you want. All right. Uh, do with that information what you will. This is true. Rui says, all right, sounds like a challenge, and I love challenges that aren't crazy. Go for it, yes. kiddo. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, definitely. We love to hear that. We love to hear that. We love to see it. <laughs> yes. God, I love how they're looking right now. Okay, I'm going to add their crests now, but I'm going to add it in a separate, gonna load that in a separate layer. Justin, yours looks so good. This looks so good too. I'm so proud of us. I know. Especially because we did this like not in a non stressful way. <laughs> I know. No challenge is too crazy if you love the subject. This is true. You got this. Yeah, 100%. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I don't like how crooked the top of this tail looks. Made it look nasty. Add some spikes. Yeah. There we go. It's 
fine. Mm -hmm. And as I imagine what would be the crest kind of like structure, I think I've said this before in the last stream, it's kind of more like large osteoderms that kind of sit in the skin rather mm -hmm. than like the extensions of the head. Like, like sort of just armor? Yeah, like large plated kind or... of armor that comes out of the skin right here. Yeah. The well, reason why I did it on a separate layer is because I can, you know, be more free with like how I place it and then I can erase what's underneath, you know? Yeah. That's go. one of my favorite aspects about ZBrush too, is if you're able to, you're able to do detail on layers. And you can like you can almost change the opacity of an entire detailed layer on like your sculpt. Mm. Gotcha. No no exactly. Also, Rui said something. I do know how to tell the age of bones and other stuff, like how dinosaurs usually die naturally in the bird in the bur and the bird kind of stretched backwards position, like the dinosaur death pose you're thinking of. Oh the the uh, the yeah, the post mortem's uh, retraction of the neck ligaments. Yeah. As a post mortem contraction. Look at you flexing your knowledge. No, bro, I'm. It was more of a Jurassic Park because Doctor Ellie Sattler was saying that in the Jurassic in Jurassic Park. Remember, remember she's pointing on the screen. Oh yeah. <laughs> the post mortem contraction. I love it. Yeah, but it's gonna get more fun when you um when you start being able to actually get into carbon dating and you get to use carbon dating machines and things like that. I know back at CSUN, uh, or the school, you know, the university, University of North Carolina, they've got a machine that was able to like get more accurately date. Uh, I think beryllium. Oh, that's like cool. Beryllium. Uh, or they have like a new. They have like yeah, they have new like analyzing machines that just came in and they. I think they keep them downstairs in the lab, but uh, that's how they're able to do like a. Like a cosmogenic dating of rocks, and it helps with like determining like a, uh, you know, glacier movement and earthquakes and things like that. It's just super fun. I love, I love that stuff. Right. I don't know anything about it because I'm my brain is just tired. But like, it's so much fun to lo like listen to. This is true. Okay, you know what? I'm I say, Justin, you, you finished it. a lot quicker than I. I still have to do a back leg, dude. Well, it's just going to be a silhouette, but I'm trying. I know. Thank you, my guy. I wonder, like, a full-on <laughs> render with my... <laughs> I love it. It's so much fun. This is great, dude. I know. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're learning. We're cooking, dude. We are cooking. Um... Yeah, another question from Ruiz. Yeah, I learned about that briefly last year. I remember it used something sort of expiration date of carbon, if I remember right. Also, just out of curiosity, did you said said, what is your favorite Godzilla designs? This is again apropos. We're, we're... Oh, RJ, take it away. Uh, very easily, very very easily, my favorite Godzilla design of all time is Godzilla ninety four, the unused Stan Winston one. Don't get me wrong. I love 2014. 1998 was fun. Godzilla 1992, I really love. Uh, Space Godzilla is, is a villain, but it's one of my favorite one. That's my favorite. My second favorite Godzilla <clears throat> villain. Ghidorah is my favorite. But if I had to say my favorite Godzilla design is 1994. The unused Stan Winston one. I love that one so much. Yes. That's yeah. I'll agree with you. That's one of my favorite. Uh, that's definitely my favorite unused. My favorite official though, is um, Godzilla two thousand when it battles. Oh, Order. okay. Oh, my I gotta gosh. say, I gotta agree with you. If I had to, if I had to say used epic. one, that one, yeah, the the the, the, the red <laughs> boy. Yes, the uh, oh, it's so good. I think mostly, I think probably because the 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 dorsal plates are just so fantastic. You wait, did any of you see? Okay, so if you know Godzilla, do you guys know I worked on a on a Godzilla suit? Um, if you guys don't know who Kaiju Chris is, I know who. Christopher. He made a Kaiju suit for Godzilla Fest. Like made a Godzilla, and um, I assisted him on that. I was able to help guide him when it comes to like you know like making the whole uh, 
you know, the foam, because my, my background was in foam fabrication. I learned, I picked up at a, was working with um, Ted Haynes and doing a couple of classes with him, uh, with Stan Winston school. But uh, uh, yeah, that uh, Godzilla suit, if you go, I think, I think if you guys go to my Instagram, if you go in the back, I mean, in the back, if you scroll in, into the past. Yes, go to the back of his Instagram. Uh, you, yeah, you go to the back of my Instagram. Yeah, you go to the back of my Instagram. Uh, I think you probably see a couple of progress pictures when I would uh drive out because this is when I lived in LA, uh in uh, San Fernando. Um he lived over in a uh, Riverside and I would go drive out there and um uh help him build this uh this fun Godzilla suit. Um he still does creature suit acting, uh he still does all the, the fun creature stuff. Wasn't he the saber tooth cat? I don't know if he works at the museum. Yeah he was a saber tooth cat for a while over at uh at H he, he was the Triceratops and uh, I think he was the T Rex too. He did all of them. He, you know, uh, he was, he was like, Hunter? Why not live it up yeah we did all that but yeah godzilla um i love that the uh uh peep, uh creature suit fabrication creature suit holds a special place in my heart so yeah, justin definitely is, love it just giving a heads up justin is like legit crazy that, that man i've seen that man's like reels the special effects he's done it's crazy thank you i'm trying here sweet till our short film my guy you know be fun oh justin okay. guess who knows how to rig a three oh. guess who knows how to rig a cgi model now <gasps> you. yeah we learned it the other day so i got that skill yes so fantastic you can uh you can totally like 3d model your creatures i can make a yeah. i can make a rig for it we can animate oh that's fantastic you know what? you're gonna have to team up with my friend juliana because my friend juliana is in an uh, animation school and yes so you guys can, like definitely tips and everything too she finishes school this december so like definitely uh that'd be good networking you guys might like that would be fun down also uh hold on two questions uh oh it's funny we actually had this question not too long ago just out of curiosity what's your guys opinions on cloning extinct species like woolly mammoths and dodo birds i'm against it and i can explain why what's your opinions Yo, Justin, have you seen any of the JP T Rex animatronics in person? Were you at Stan Winston Studios? And not N. Oh. Uh you wanna go first, Justin, with you know, our kind of stance on, you know, genetically engineering, you know, random extinct animals like mammoths and dodos? You go first. You have pretty good you 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 know how to relay the gist of it. Uh look, I'll put you like this. Wait. Interesting uh uh answer to a very very real question of extinction however it's feel you must also think of it like this consider the action and the kind of intent of what that really stands for it's like yeah you know these animals are gone and yes humans played a huge part in their uh extinction oh uh we're talking about right now cloning animals and then getting it well cloning extinct animals not you know random animals and uh justin's time at stan winston studios um more like this we're not really for it on the grounds that like it feels less of like um it feels less like you're trying to reconstruct an extinct environment and more for like you know we're doing it for vanity like yeah the animal was there historically but there are plenty of animals there now that fill that role and there's a lot of animals that are very endangered and going extinct that can use those funds and resources is that not important though, you know, to clone like species that are near extinct? Yeah, you know, if you got like a bunch of white rhinos, maybe it'd be nice to have a bunch of others, you know, to really help stabilize this population. But as far as like mammoths and dodos, you know, they're gone. And let them be kind of a reminder of like the fragility of life and our kind of, at least this is my, again, my opinion, you know, this is what I think. It just, I think it's more or less of like, you know, focus on the animals and bio biodiversity we have to lose right now and use those resources for that. Am I against like cloning animals specifically? I guess not specifically so, but it depends on the context. If you're trying to make a woolly mammoth because you think that looks rad, I wouldn't say you should do so. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. These things are not toys, I should say. That's kind of my thing. It's, uh, you know, these were, you know, we have ecosystems that need to be preserved here and now you know yeah definitely 100 percent. but that's just me um uh, exactly you know you have animals that you wouldn't really know how to 
how a mammoth should act because there's no mammoths left to teach it how to be a mammoth. Yeah, it's really sad. It's really, really, really more of a sad thing. Yeah. But, you know, take that energy and, you know, maybe save some, like, Sumatran rhinos, which are, fun fact, related to the woolly rhino, which blew my mind when I found out. <laughs> um, real quick, though, getting back to you, Justin, you know, um, uh, what are your, uh, your, did you said says yo Justin have you seen any JP T-Rex animatronics in person when you're at the Stan Winston schools uh no I did not um the times I did visit there oh wait the stream froze uh, is the stream froze on your end do you see it uh let me zoom in real quick uh oops one second fuck uh Zooming in one quick. Oh, I accidentally just realized I paused it on my computer. No, it's not frozen. Okay. Oh. Okay, it's still going. No, uh, Acro is back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stream seems to be very tricky. But, today. um. Oh, I mean, it didn't freeze on mine. It wasn't frozen up because I'm watching it too, so I can watch yours. That makes sense. Okay, uh, but yeah. But, but uh, yeah. So when I uh, during my time when I was the first time I was there it was in like 2014, I believe. Uh, that was when they had the they did have Jurassic World stuff there. Um, that was when I realized that they. That's when I asked around because I was asking. I got to see the Indominus like back in 2014. They had went during the, the 3D printed bus. So you know that one bust that they have with the Indominus Rex that everybody's seen. Uh, so I got to see when they first they printed that out, and it didn't have a, it didn't have any eyes. I mean, it didn't have any teeth or anything like that. And then, um, but uh, that's the one thing that I remember that they said that they uh, they didn't make any animatronics for it. And I was like, oh no, this movie's not going to be like the, this movie's not going to be like Jurassic Park. It's not going to have the animatronics. He knew before uh, all of us. Ah, uh, dude, I was I was disappointed in 2014, man. I already knew, but um. I had to, yeah, I had to sign like an NDA so you can really like talk sure, about sure. it during the time before it came out. Uh, but yeah, but then the thing is also inside the studio too. Then when I was actually doing like shop monkey work, like back in like I think back in like twenty sixteen probably, um, they uh, they don't have so they the big thing the the really really big things like the animatronics you have to keep in mind they're made out of foam latex and foam latex is very susceptible to basically time and oxygen so th there's none because they well they degrade they fall apart with time foam latex uh, once it oxidizes it crumbles away literally like dust i don't know if you guys have ever put a um if you guys have ever put a couch if you guys have ever seen like a couch on the side of the street if you ever see the foam of the couch how it's just literally falling apart like dust that's the same thing as that's that is what foam latex is made out of it's literally the same material it's just wh it's latex um with whipped up air in it that's just like cooked like it's just cooked at a high temperature and it starts to uh because it's expanded it just becomes really like soft like foam and uh it degrades really 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 quickly so there was nothing going to be like that uh there unfortunately which is okay that's fine um they do have the uh they do have certain things like in glass cases like they do have the original maquettes and they do have like crash mccreary uh they had a crash mccreary like collections and like portfolios up in like the showrooms and stuff like that which is really 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 cool but uh other than that um yeah i didn't actually get to to see anything i just got to be in the in the i got to at least be shot monkey in the room where the t-rex once stood so that's always a that's always a fun thing you know sometimes you just take with what you can Cool. Uh, yes, the Horizon model kits. In fact, the Retro Revival T Rex, the sculpt on that is based off of the Retro, is based off of the Horizon model because uh, it's it's the original uh, the original Kenner toy based off of. So you know, I get you on that one. Uh, 
So Justin, asking you a, a cool question that you could, what some wisdom you could probably impart. What advice do you have to any young special effects artist that wants to get into it? Um, how to get into special effects? Yeah. Uh, definitely stand, stand with in school. Your, your best probable resource there because they have tutorials and everything. Um, YouTube. Go on YouTube because uh, that's probably where I started learning a bunch of things too. Uh, ask people like RJ and I. Ask around. Um, also experiment. Have fun with it. You know, just have a lot of fun. Also, make sure you're not allergic to anything. This is true. Because <laughs> you don't want to be allergic to a chemical that you're uh, working with. That'd you're using. Yeah. Like, if you have a latex allergy or something like that, you know, you don't want to, you know, could end up bad. Also, they, they're talking about the new Chaos Theory trailer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think, uh, folks, you, with that uh, groan of disappointment, you get an insight how he feels. Yeah. You be honest, you know. Just another. Yeah, the thing is, is that like I, I think what it is, you have all these shows, like all these Marvel shows that are getting like huge, like live action stuff and everything, and we're getting like Jurassic Park, The Sims edition. You know, it's not a. It's not. I, I'm not, I, as much as I love like. Don't get me wrong. Like I love a uh, Chris Sears' work on the uh, on his animation skills and everything like that. But at some point, it's like you got to realize that it's a it is a, it's an animated show. It's a kid show. It's like a Nickelodeon show. You know, it's that's and that's all it's gonna be. It's not. And it kind of I think it, what I I think what it kind of does is it kind of really it kind of backtracks and kind of destroys the emphasis of the orig the or you know of Jurassic Park, which was like you know, special effects, practical effects, paleontology, science, because, you know, it, it, as much as, uh, you know, anatomically incorrect the original ones were, there was intention there to be able to do at least do a representation of a realistic dinosaur. And that although goes down to like, they didn't make them big lumbering dinosaurs, you know, they had, they were leathery skin texture, mosaic scales, you know, like they had, they were alive, they didn't just, you know they hunted they do they know there was a a realistic aspect to them and um and then when you just do it into an animated show that's meant for kids it really sort of destroys the original awe and purpose behind it you know so it's i'm just not really a big i'm not really too keen on it sadly i know that's kind of a I don't even know if people. I'm sorry, people. I, I didn't. I know you didn't even ask for my opinion. Probably, my opinion was probably not asked for. But like that's just a. I just you know that's just kind of my been my view on it. It's a little bit too. Um, it's it's too too much to sell toys, you know. And sometimes it's more fun just to be able to watch and get your mind blown. Being in Cal, Acro says something. Being in California, I assume you've gone to see Icons of Darkness. I'm not aware of that. What is that? Icons of Darkness. So what like is a, that? It's like a heavy metal convention? <laughs> Please. Fantastic, ed. RJ. Fantastic. Either way, educate us. Like, uh, you know, there's a lot of things. Yeah, please do. Cause there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things. Of things. Keep in mind, California is big. Massive. So uh, there's a lot of things that happen here. If it's like a convention for like creatures or whatnot, there's also Monster Fest, which is cool. Oh, Monster Fest is the big one, guys. Have you ever had a chance to? be able to go to that definitely go to it especially if you're interested in special effects um because oh yeah that's some good that will yes that'll blow your mind oh my god just yours is looking amazing thank you i love yours yours is so groovy I'm trying to be um dudison says no no i definitely want to hear your all opinions very poignant poignantly put thank you um yeah yeah we're just Justin and I are of the same mind. We're not too big a fans of the Jurassic World franchise. Um, I understand why it exists, and that's fine. I'm not going to sit here and get angry at people. Huh? Um, it, here's the thing. If you like it, completely fine. You know, I'm not going to tell you that it's not cool. If it gets you inspired, let it be in the thing to inspire you. I'm saying that you know, for, for Justin and I, what we were exposed to is a different thing, and we recognize that, you know. We are products yeah. of our environment and our time and, you know, what we enjoy and the things that we wish to kind of 
what inspired us in our work, you know. And for, for us, it was kind of that nature mm -hmm. of the film. Um, I'm not going to sit, you know, I, I'm not one to tell someone is like, you're, you know, wrong for liking this, you know, franchise or movie. And it's like, eh, at the end of the day, it's irrelevant. If you start making cool artwork for because a franchise. Of, yeah. If you're making cool artwork out of it, good. Also, Rui says, man, I love how California gets a lot of fun stuff in Arizona. Where I'm located, it gets like nothing. There's cool stuff in Arizona, I imagine. There's cool museums out there. Hmm? Yeah. We don't know what, but like. No, there's, there's like. <laughs> no, isn't, hold on. I'm just Josh. And there's lots of good. I mean, there's lots of cool things in Arizona. Yeah. The, actually, my friend even. My friend even uh, is doing his master's in Arizona. It's an urban planning, not geology, but uh, same concept. Hey, there we go. Um, yeah. yeah, good schooling in Arizona. Not gonna lie. Hmm. Okay, let me just. <sighs> okay, you know that looks fine. We'll just go with that, and then we'll shape it up in a. I just want to sketch because this little back leg is just gonna be a flat gray. Okay. Uh... Arizona, which is fun. Is it like a place where a bunch of bears are? That sounds pretty cool. Also, did you said in Minneapolis? I know SVP was in Minneapolis. It was gonna be in Minneapolis next year, which is gonna be pretty cool. Okay, so RJ, how do I highlight? How do I highlight the line art again? So what you're gonna, uh, you guys just trying to do? Are you trying to like do an outline like you did last time to do a flat layer, or you, you want to select all the line art? Uh, to like a flat layer. So yeah, you're gonna go to the lasso tool. Okay. You're gonna hold right. You're gonna lift. Um, you're gonna lift click on that and hold it. And oh, then, oh, oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. you're, you're going to select the polygonal lasso tool, and you're going to pick a point and just follow the outline. Only the outline. Make sure to you know follow the outline to the letter. So don't like, don't go like into anything. Just follow the pick a, pick the outline and go through the whole outline of the character. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Dang man, I, I just love mm -hmm. your textures and your line. Your line weights are amazing. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying to learn. Like you inspire me. I can't. You inspire me, my guy. Otherwise, I would not be here on Photoshop. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh yeah, Arizona. Yeah, you get to drive through bear, wolf, bison, horse, and fox enclosures, but it's like a nature preserve in Prescott or Williams. That's pretty rad. Oh. So you can kind of see like a your own Jurassic Park, or more so, uh, Holocene Park. Yeah, so just go. So I know it's very methodical, but just make sure to... Yeah, you're doing good. Go through only the outline. Cool. Okay, let me just start adding more of these scoots. Oh wait, I can just, I can just go over it like this. <laughs> I can redo the, I could do the teeth and stuff later. Yeah, no, just do that, and I, I can teach you at another point how to like negatively select, as in like delete for selection. There we go. It's always good, and I will always say this, draw through your shapes. You'd be surprised how much little details do matter. Hmm? <laughs> like right here, these little back spikes, you know, I'm trying to get the right angle on them to make it feel like they're, you know, weight. I love it when, um, hold on, Ruby says, the scariest creatures are the bison because it approaches the car one at a time looking at me through the window. But I had to be careful not to spook it because it flip your car over. Yeah, bison, herbivores are terrifying. That's a, one trope that I'm glad to see. That's all good. 
Um, one trope I'm glad to see. Moose. Yeah, moose are terrifying. Uh, but I'm saying one trope that I'm glad to kind of see, you know, fade over time is the, you know, um, vulnerable herbivore. And nah, they're like <laughs> super crazy death machines on their own. Like, you know, when I saw a prehistoric planet and I saw those dreadnoughts like fight each other like in a full on kaiju match, I was like, it was the most hyped I've ever been. I was like screaming. I was like, yo, it's so cool. <laughs> Because it was so cool. It was just like seeing them like actually grapple with each other, and you know you could feel the weight of them, and you can the behavior was so believable. You know, they felt like giant elephant seal komodo dragons just like boxing it out. But that's the thing. Like, would you really want to tangle with that? Of course not. They live in a world full of giant carnivores from like childhood. You know, they're not gonna be super nice. I love me some sauropods. Like, can we just appreciate them? Can we appreciate them, Justin? Yes, let's appreciate them with all of our, all of our hearts. All right, folks, in the chat, type type your favorite sauropods. Barasaurus, good choice. Goated. Oh, yeah. Long boy. Sora Poseidon. Shinosaurus still. These are good choices. Uh, Justin, what is your favorite sauropod? Argentinosaurus. That's a good one. Classic, classic super big boy. Um... Okay, I have two. One that's definitely not any a thing anymore, but my god, I loved it so much. Uh, and then yes, I know where you're going. With I know this. exactly. I have two, so I have a real one, like as in, like okay, yes, yes, I have an actual like taxa that's valid. Uh, answer. Anything chunky? Uh, Acro said uh, anything chunky. Uh, Patasaurus and Titanosaurus, especially my favorite, like valid sauropod. Um, I really, really love Alamosaurus. That's my favorite one. Uh, I think they're really cool. You know, I love Titanosaurus. I think they're really rad. Um, I do love Brontosaurus. That's, I know, classic, but I love them. They're like little boxers. <laughs> ah, see, Duderson is knowing exactly where we're going for this. So my other one, the one that I really like, the one that I really enjoy, yeah, it's not a Valataxa anymore, and that's completely fine. Uh... I'm not going to hold on to it. It's not. You know, it's not. But, You're upset. I know. Be, be angry. It's okay. Okay, fine. I'm a little angry. But it's it's cool. It's not that it's not like an equally cool animal. Maripinosaurus is pretty rad. But it was Amphicelius fragilimensis. I really wanted the blue whale 200 foot long super super sauropod. <laughs> uh, come on. Part of my brain is pretty simple. As complex and as nuanced as I can be when it comes to like my, you know, creature designs. Yeah, as I say this, as I'm drawing the most like edgy, indulgent creature ever, <laughs> uh, I do really would. Ever since I saw it in, in Paleo World, when like Bakker was talking about like this thing would have been massive and huge herds, clearing forests, and it was just like this super diplodocid that you know would have been you know huge, and it's based off the vertebrae of what what they think is Marapine, what is now Marapinosaurus. Um, I don't know. I thought I thought it was cool. Uh, and also, Ruiz has a question: Is Trodon still valid taxa? I don't think it is anymore. No, from when last time I checked, because uh, originally it was just a taxonomic throwaway. Um, that it's actually a part of. I don't remember the name right now. It's actually something else because it was only like limited. Usually, like usually, like trap like. Like trash bin taxons are at like because there's so many of them limited. Um, yeah, there's they're so yeah, either there's so many of them or they're so limited uh, uh, in evidence. Uh, there isn't much really to that you can't actually fit them in with anything, you know. But no, no I don't believe the and that that's actually it's actually I'm playing on that on something else, but like it's a uh, yeah, it's not. 
it's a former. Yeah. I don't I don't know if it's considered a there's a whole genus under a I'm not too sure if that's a if they're currently doing something like that, but I know that it's not a what was it? Because the original was like true on formosis or something. Like yeah, that. um, like there, you know, there's less of a natrix and uh, pectinodon. Which well, pectinodon's from Jurassic Park. It's not the or the troodon troodon pectinodon. That's that specific one is not real. That's from Jurassic. Okay, Park. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, what about? Yeah. The pectinodon was a thing. I think that's what it was. Is originally, I think it was a part of pectinodon, mm -hmm. and it just became. It just kind of. It, they just kind of grouped it into that and now it's like final yeah it makes sense okay oh sorry also did you say uh stanonychosaurus yes that's that's the one uh barosaurus filled that spot ah. as of late yes i think you know and here's the thing i do love barosaurus i do barosaurus is rad i also love bruhathkiosaurus i know that's contentious i don't know if it's <laughs> going to be an actual thing i know there's like fighting on with if it's an actual like bone or a piece of you know petrified wood but my point is, though, Barosaurus is the closest thing I can get to that. So I do love Barosaurus a lot. And I do love John Conway's work on Barosaurus with that art piece. It's really sick. <laughs> you know, I'm a sucker for giant sauropods. I do love them. I don't know. Something about, like, Titanic land whales, you know, makes me happy. Like, if I could be a dinosaur... You would get anything just to hear one walk around in the distance. I could be I, if I okay. I'll put it like this: if I could be a prehistoric animal, uh, there's only two I would be, like a sauropod, and or an azadarkid. Again, very simple reasons. I want to be so huge that nothing messes with me, so I could just throw stride across the land and vibe and eat plants. Um, and then same thing with an azadarkid. I'm super. I'm the size of a giraffe and I fly. You know, the planet is my playground. You know, I just kind of vibe. Literally, I I like to. I would be the most vibiest of the animals. I I don't really want to be like, yeah. <laughs> oh man, or eat babies. Yeah, they do. They they ate a lot of children in prehistoric planet. The as dark a song back then when we were kids. The as dark kids eat babies. Are uh, the eating babies one? It's just it's the lyrics in the song. I remember. The, the band Which sounds one? like that sounds like a great That's band name. The as dark kids eat babies. Eating. <laughs> No, the as dark kids oh eat babies. Gosh. That sounds like a. It's, there you go. That sounds like a, like a good screamo. That's paleo screamo. Pipe bands. Paleo screamo, dude. Yeah. That's some. That's a genre of music that needs to exist. I'd love to be a diplotic, uh, Dilophosaurus. They're pretty rad. I like Dilophosaurus. Do you want to see a Dilophosaurus, Ruiz? I have one. Not the not the Jurassic one. I got another one. Let's see if I can find you. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I actually named him. Love that one. What did I name him oh, again? Oh, yeah, his name was Pet. I'm just kidding. No, it was an edgy name. You gave him an edgy did, name. No, did I give him a leg? No, his name was Shiloh. Yeah, it was pretty edgy. Shiloh's edgy? But at the moment, for the cut. Well, for, I think for the topic, from what we were discussing and where you came up with the name, it was an edgy kind of fun. Oh, that thing. makes it, no, yeah, because like his the, the other one I was going to draw was Legend Tripper. That was the issue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Here was me doing some practicing with my textures on the Stellophosaurus and doing an accurate one. Shiloh is pretty edgy. <laughs> yeah, this is true. I'm not going to fight that. This is true. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's me practicing. Shiloh Uh, Thank you. Yeah. It's a great little practice. I, I, he's missing an arm because he got attacked by another Dilophosaurus. That's why he's edgy. Yeah, I think mean, that's what it was. That's why he was edgy. This is true. Yeah, it's a good little practice. You know, I'm probably gonna finish it and then you know I'll post it later on. But you know, I was just practicing my textures. Yeah, post more of your things. See, you're getting the thousands of likes, Mike. I know. I gotta post more of my artwork. Like I draw a lot more than I actually post. A lot of it, mostly, has just been kind of like you know the stream stuff because we've been focusing on that. But like. Me. Let me show some of the. Well, I think I think the cross post when it comes to social media, the cross po posting helps because uh, my followers are seeing it too. This is true. This is very cool. Um, I'm able to give a little a little extra juice there. Thank you, thank you, buddy. Um, I had a Giganotosaurus. Oh, the T Rex. You had a T Rex. 
Oh, Tyrannosaurus Regina. Oh, the the the, the proposed like three species split for T Rex, and you did win the colors of Yoshi. That's pretty rad. I had some Satakosaurus I had around here. How come nobody has painted one of the beasts of the Mesozoic T Rexes as Yoshi? Hasn't someone needs to do that? Unless they haven't haven't done it already. Justin, you can do it. I believe in you. No, I'll I'll make my own. T make my own check i'll make i'll make my uh, my uh, my novel t-rex into a oh i forgot to show the, I'll, I'll show them this okay so my dueling trikes um there's a version that i'm actually going to redo so the one you saw was like yeah that one's finished but before that there was an underpainting one when i was taking it in a different direction justin you know exactly where i'm going with this one i do i actually have decided to redo this and i, I really kind of want to redo this painting because it's so cool so this was the original version of it before I went to the other version. Um, there were a lot of things that changed, obviously. You know, I, I wanted to make it more readable. But, you know, I want to... I do like this color palette, this kind of abstract kind of wasteland one. So I might come back to that one. Um, I also... What else did I do? And I have a, I have a lot of drawings. You get to a certain point, you just draw so much. You have, it's like, where did anything go? Oh my gosh, that's how my iPad is with Procreate. I feel that. Uh, dinosaurs, people, and vehicles. I feel like that. I need to draw more vehicles, yeah. Here's some Satakasaurus sketches I did. Oh, you mean, yeah, let me close this. Yeah, this mystical yet realistic yeah i really kind of enjoy kind of a more abstracty uh, it's not super abstract it's still figurative but like you know kind of more impressionistic color palette yeah and that goes to the thing you can experiment with your colors you don't really need to you know paleo art is still an art form so you can get crazy with it in the legendary words of john conway um let me see what else i could show that's kind of rad one thing I'd like to do is I do um, dinosaur gestures. So like gesture drawings. Uh, but, you know, from imagination. Let me see if I can find. Let me see. Yeah. Like, I just fill up pages with just drawing these guys. Yeah. That's exactly what I would do, too. I would do skeletal melts uh, when I used to work at the museum. So I'd fill up pages, you know, with these little sketches. Yeah, you can see it. You can see where a lot of these got used for other things. That's the coolest thing about it. Like you find stuff that is so useful in this. This is one of my favorites. This brontosaur right here. Or I don't know what this was. It was like an undescript sauropod. Yeah, it's always a fun thing to do. Let me close this one. No. Okay, get back to this. See, you're already on the color and flatting of this thing, man. See, I'm, I'm far behind. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm having fun with it. No worries. Okay, so uh, we're coming up on time. Do you want to just kind of stop here and then uh, we can go over? So, so we can finish um, these sketches right now, uh, but we can also talk to them about our plans of what we're going to do next. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Lay it on them, man. So, okay. So, Justin and I, so as you see, we have two versions right now. But we need to consolidate them into one ultimate being for this figure. You know, within the restrictions, you know, having two heads would be kind of complicated. So, it's going to lose a head, but don't worry. There's going to be a, little, a lot of aspects. 
of like what's here that's going to make it into the the final figure. Um, we'll still be ahead in the game. Of, oh, real quick though, Rui's got two. Um, when I drop Halo accurate uh, dinosaurs, I look at skeletal mounts and put meat, meat and flesh on them. That's great. You know, it's good to get your anatomy. I also. Oh, what, what one piece of advice though? Um, the skeletal mounts look at museums, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, one piece of advice uh, I've been taught is to not necessarily use those as reference because the how they're sometimes lined up is not always um, the most accurate. Keep in mind that once they put those things, yeah, once they put those things up, they don't they rarely ever adjust them uh, because they're molded together with steel and iron and stuff like that. So the the posture and everything like that is not always necessarily accurate. Just to be able to keep that in mind. That's all. Well said. Uh, uh, sorry, go back to the... Uh, no, 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 you're fine, you're fine. That's a good point. You know, uh, a great person for online skeletals is Matt Dempsey he, uh, or Scott Hart Hartman. Yes. They are the base of a skeletal reconstructions. So, yeah, so there's a lot of great references online. Make use of those. Um, mm -hmm. I will say this though. Um, oh, well, this guy's coming along great. Um, so Justin and I are going to be finishing these designs off screen. By the time of the next session, we'll have it ready because I'm going to be focusing on paint and coloration while Justin's going to be modeling what we designed. That doesn't mean we're not going to post what we uh, have during the week. You know, we'll make, we'll make those posts before like our next session, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to be combining our design, uh, my design, with his design into one ultimate design. So I'm going to be taking, Justin's going to be sending me uh, a file of his character he's working on right now. And I'm going to be finishing up my design right here. And then we're going to be combining the two of them. But yeah. Into magic. Into one singular ultimate, ultimate Giga Chattosaurus. And for fun fact for anyone who yes, missed it. Yes, with the old. The ultimate goal of turning it into a figure. Yes. See, there's the ultimate form right here. If anyone missed it, this is the Giga Chad Ultima Source. <laughs> I can't. That's going to be the figure. It's just going to be the, 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 ultima, the ultimate. The it's going to be the ultimate Chad. Ultimate Chad. I knew you were going to go with her. A literal Ultima Source. <laughs> is this true? Um, but yeah, no, this will be the literal Ultima Source. So, Justin, if you can zoom out real quick, I just want to get a sense of, like, where you're at. Oh, sure. Yeah, listen. La -da -da. God, this is um, so cool. Oops. I love yours so much. Thank you. Yeah, great. I still have to put in the other... I still have to just put in the other... Uh, this is this is literally just going to be, like, a flat color that's a little bit darker that's in the fine. background just to give a shape. So I'm going to have a line. That's but, fine. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, also, just kind of mm -hmm. saying, Justin, did you want me to do an orthographic view on this character? Um, what do you mean by orthographic? My right. brain's like turn around. Did you need me to do a turnaround for the modeling? <laughs> okay, so yeah. Um, in all honesty, uh, reference material from any angle is fantastic. Um, you go ham. I know that I can. I I I'm used to improvising like structures. I'm, I'm used to improvising shapes. So if you only did like like maybe like one view or even two views, I know I could probably go off of that. How about like? Uh... But uh, if you want to. If you want to go crazy, I can literally work with, with like, whatever. Okay. You know? do you, what I'm saying is, do you want something like this? Let's see if I can find it. Where did you go? Ah. Do you want me to go, like, this hard? The harder, the better. Okay. Sorry, what? Sorry, what? Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we can... Sorry, my brain. No worries, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'll try to get um yeah i'll try to get some poses like this I can oh get yeah to... yeah if you want to be creative if you want to go crazy for it and like just go ham yeah, yeah why not so i'll know? do i'll do a, well this yeah. also be yeah, good in all honesty i understand practice practice too you know yeah no worries you could also but this will also be great promotion artwork for the for you know the piece itself when we do you know box art and so on and so forth yeah you know you can include that in uh you can include the art and uh, we can include it like in a brochure and a pamphlet that just could illustrate basically the steps, you know? That'd be kind yeah, of fun. Not no the worries. steps, but the journey there. Exactly. 
Okay, cool. So yeah, we're going to be doing that, folks. We're going to be bringing this very edgy boy to life. And, you know, again, it will be our first collaborative piece as an actual figure, an actual model that could be yours. It's going to be exciting, right? Super exciting. Super fun. Okay. Yeah, heck yeah. Are you kidding me? I know. It's really cool to do that. Okay, we're going to be ending quite in just a little bit, folks. We just got some minor things to put. Okay. You want to call it like at like 50, 950, call it even? Yeah, sure. I just want to be able to get a couple of, I just want to get the flats down on this nice and clean so I don't have to worry about it. Okay. I just want to finish like some of the line art here. Because mm -hmm. I'm like almost done. I wonder what accessories we could always include with this guy because all my figures come with accessories that uh, the upcoming ones do and like I know I include like all the upcoming ones include like a base and so I'm kind of wondering like what we could like what could be the base yeah, if we want to do a base. Oh, uh, I got you know, one, but we, I'm... We I'm, do the medium one. I'm, I'm going to say, do you, how bold do you want to be with the base? I am a... Sir, if you knew me, I am... I, oh my gosh, the bases I come up with are a freaking... You want to do like an Indominus you Rex? you seen the bases I come up with? You want to do like a dead Indominus Rex? What if we keep... Uh, well, what if we keep it like 98, like 98 style? You know, like if it was a... Uh, a 98 Indominus Rex? Like... Well, I mean, like ninety-eight, like. What do you mean, like a dead? No, I mean, like, what if we keep, like keep the time period like nineteen ninety-eight? Oh, like cool, cool, cool. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, do you want to have like? You know? Oh, we could. You know what we could do? We could put one of the other like chaos effect hybrids that we did. Like it's just. Oh, that's true. You could, like, what do you mean, like, dead? Dead or yeah, like? Yeah, like a, you just killed it. Like a little add, like an add-on. <laughs> well, like maybe, <laughs> maybe a little add-on, or like you just killed it or something. Like you know, like the a torn up carcass of like a Paradynonicus or something. That's true. I like, guess this is the ultimate it's hybrid. Like... Yeah, it's true. Dude, please do. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. Ruiz is, is campaigning for a dino damage version. What do you say to that, Justin? I am going to be 100% honest with you. Dino damage is my least favorite thing in toys. That's completely fine. Um, that's why I haven't included. That's why I don't plan to include it in any figures. Mostly because uh, um, it is a lot of extra pieces. Uh, it does interfere lots of times if people want to be able to repaint them. Um, there, uh, there's also the continuity aesthetic where the figure looks clean across the whole thing. Uh, that's why I usually keep out of Dino damage because. Um, it does interfere with the overall aesthetic of the figure. Oh, did you and say? And I, I kind of tr strongly go with that. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no worries. And yeah, that's good. Uh, did you say it said, kind of wish the base had a decapitated spino head? <laughs> no gore. I can't. I have to be. You have to be careful with gore because that's a. Uh, the, the the overall the overall goal a lot of a lot of these guys is so that they could actually be. Um, they could be mass produced in the future. So a lot of my upcoming figures are done within the, are done with the, um, the intention that they could be mass produced. That makes sense. Oh, like That's the little the, the little the pieces one. of gore would be intense to like. Yeah, it's not necessarily something you can include on a figure if you're trying to sell it at Target. That makes sense. So that's so that's the interesting thing about this figure, guys. Is this figure is actually going down as a model that because if you guys know this, the the plan is the. RJ and I, we are we both working on businesses that are the intention, and they seem to be in the direction where they're going to be going to professional like company in the future. Um, if that's hasn't been apparent with our work and with our goals, um, I do plan to uh, be able to make figures that I want them to. I would like them to be in stores. I would like them to be able to be on store shelves. Uh, so you'll notice that the figures coming up are a little bit more toyetic. 
they have a lot more detail. Is if you guys have seen the concept art of the spine of the Sukumimus, um, a lot of them are a little bit more toyetic. They're a little bit more. Uh, they're not as they're not glorified statues. They're not very very. They're not supposed to be very very deep detailed to where like the details not gonna be able to be seen. They're meant so you can like you know you can get them. You can repaint them if you wanted to. Um, and they're capable of being plastic injections. So there's a lot of things we can't include, like we can't include gore pieces because overall that's not necessarily something that we could we can put into stores. You can't put guts in stores. That's true. Um, that's why I don't do zombie dinosaurs or anything like that. But uh, yeah. Oh yeah. See the baby Ultima stores. We did want to do the small, which was the night, the night crawler or something like that. Oh, which, cool, cool, cool. Night crawler, the night, the night hunter or something. Night stalker. And with that, we could, we could include the man. We could make a guy action figure. I, I have guy action. I have human action figures for the retro revival. I already have the models for them. Cool, too. Cool, we cool. could do something like that. And that'd be yeah. no problem. Well, how about you do that? And have, um, you could do like a baby Ultima yeah. Like he has it like a little two piece thing. Huh? Yeah, it'll be fun. We can definitely do something like that. Night yeah. hunter. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and then and you, oh, then yeah, but uh, RJ, you're gonna have to do the the color concept art for that one too because, like I said, you're phenomenal. Um, gotcha. But we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely figure something out. It's not to we're not to. Uh, but yeah, there's certain things where we do have to keep toyetic because uh, the intention is this Ultimasaurus RJ's RJ's Ultimasaurus here will also be uh, hopefully be on the uh, store shelves here. Nice. You know, if it won't be next year, it'll be in a couple of years. It's going to be out there. That's the that's the plan. You know, RJ and I don't give up on things as easily. I'm hoping to really bring something. And we got something cool coming this way. Bring something fun. But yeah, something wicked. With that being said, Jurassic. you know, maybe later on, just kind of a thing. It's like you could always release a kit for like you know if they want to have their own. You know. Oh uh, yeah, there's gonna be a lot. Of, there's a lot of fun things coming up. So yeah, it's so like you know, we be selling kits for custom painting, or maybe your own build your own hybrids. Ooh, that's, that's something to think about. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I hear you, RJ. I know you're. I know you, my guy. I know. <laughs> I'll let you say, folks, that you know, these are great suggestions. Something very close to that, actually, and very it. much in that ballpark, is on its yeah. way, and. Uh, We'll keep you posted, but it's something that's going to be very amazing, and I'm really excited to be a part of this with Justin. Yep, yep, yep. It's going to be a fun time. Okay, I think that looks... That's pretty much good. Yeah, yours is already finished compared to mine. <laughs> I like yours, too. I love yours. Zoom out. I want to see yours. Will you be selling kits for custom painting or maybe even like a build draw? Oh, wait, that's, what, that's the thing you answered, right? Yeah. Okay. Unless you want to add anything else to a that, a special color version. Uh, no, I, I mean I am releasing models also coming up that are going to be uh, also blanks so that you can paint them. Not not necessarily like in pieces because you know that'd be you can't put them together without like heat, but like uh, with the classic glowing horns. I okay that right there. I don't know. I mean, is there paint? Can I? I'm pretty sure I can find airbrush. You know what would be cool? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe I can airbrush it with UV paint Ooh. so that if you put it under a black light, like the night the night hunt uh, the night hunter one, if you put it under a black light, it can glow. Ooh, that'd be rad. That could be, that could be interesting. That'd be pretty rad, just actually. A thought. But then again, I'm not. Yeah, these are these are thoughts. These are the things we write down, guys, so that we could. Uh, it could be an idea, you know. Just fixing a mild tangent. I like it, but I'm excited to see what RJ is going to come up with, too. Yeah, usually, so a little glimpse in case you guys don't know, or in case you guys are curious. Usually when I do a... When I start to do um the, uh, the coloring on these guys, or like when I start doing like... Uh, musculature I will um Uncle like I'll start like adding I'll start going with like a brush like with like white I'll turn the I'll turn the base color into a clipping mask and then I'll just like 
I'll start to I start highlighting like oops. I'll start highlighting muscles like if it wants to let if it wanted though. If it was willing to let me. If it's willing to let you like the creatures actually defy you. It's w yeah, it's apparently it's not. It's it's being difficult. Why is it doing that? What's now it? you know whatever. Oh, I see now. Nothing, never mind. <laughs> It's just yeah. Usually, I just uh, yeah, I just never. I just forget what I said. I'm just here existing. You just vibing. But yeah, I like go. Yeah, I'm just vibing. Yeah, usually I, I usually go in with different colors and I just like start the. Oh yeah, I guess I could add like a little bit of cartoon shading, Ooh. real quick in there. I don't know if you're seeing this, RJ, but I can do like. I, a I little can see bit it. Of... Yeah, no, that's looking good. Getting a little highlights uh, glow underneath. Yeah, that was unintentional. Pretend that didn't exist. <laughs> no, I didn't see it. All right. No, uh, no it's happening. I'm gonna oh, my, forget about it. We're having fun. It's gonna, over. I'm, gonna it's good. I'm just gonna rough in these last little feats, but then I think all that is left is just kind of detailing the club and the, the talons and the scoots. Um, yeah. Rui says you're gonna see Godzilla minus one. Oh, I want, yeah, I want to go see that. Are you kidding me? Looks pretty rad. I ain't gonna lie. Heck yeah. Let me just add my. Okay. Another one. Well, I guess I can just add a little paint in the eyes just to make it a little bit. I know we said like at five, but like I'm so close to like to catching up. And it's just for having fun now. For I know. Seeing that, I can clean that up later. I just want to finish the basic line work. Well, it's pretty much like you know I kind of got a little too much detailing done in the face, and I should have focused on more of the body. But it's okay, you know. Like I said, we'll finish this completely. Give him a little bit of a yes. Now you can see that he means business. Oh, Acro's oh, hopping off. Me... Good night. Take it oh, easy. Yeah. Good night. Thank you for coming. I need a lasso tool again. All right. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I think I got a nice place to stop. Here, I finished. Give me one quick sec here, okay? My line work is pretty much like there. I just need to add some additional details to the hands and the feet, and we should be good. Image layer, new layer, um, copy. I just want to do a quick thing. Okay. And then... I saw a coyote while walking to my school bus at 6 a.m. I know that feel when I was walking to my call uh, when I was walking to my work at the college at the university I saw like two coyotes trailing behind me they're pretty cool though yeah they don't attack you they're no just, like they were literally they just, they like look like they're, they look like crackheads though I'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> they just look like they look like little weird dogs they just look little goblins Sorry, I know that would be crazy but they look, a little they look like little goblin dogs they yeah, uh they're weird they were they were like probably about like 16 feet behind me mm. they weren't super far behind they were close they were pretty cool though 
One looked chill. I was like, what's up, man? <laughs> like, I talked, I vibe with the animals and was like, hey, what's up? What's up, guys? Yes. Okay. I think this is a good place to stop. Um, thank you, folks. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm starting to pass out now. <laughs> it's starting to get to me. Alrighty. But thank you, folks, for joining in with us and, you know, watching us get to this stage uh yeah next session so the next rest of the work we're going to do with these designs is going to be off screen just kind of finishing them up uh but the next time you should see them they're going to be ready uh justin's going to begin the modeling process with our new combined version we'll be posting uh mm -hmm. the newer versions of the artwork um oh yeah, real quick with the ruiz yeah i don't blame you that could be pretty freaky if they're like too close and if it's dark yeah i don't blame yeah. you at all but uh, back to this yes. though, real quick. Yeah, we're we'll be posting the more refined version of these later in the week, so you may not. And so I, I, I don't. For me, I'm not probably gonna post exactly tonight because I'm also like super dead, you know. Um, yeah. So we'll probably get them ready like uh, soon that you see them. Justin looking fantastic. I, I really like what you did. Um, Same to you, my gent. Loving yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we'll have it ready and then next session we're going to be doing color patterns and coloration oh, i'm going to be doing that specifically and then justin's going to be working on actually modeling the the figure and uh yeah thank you folks yep. uh this is part two we're on our way to part three the finale season one finale and then after this we move on to the amazing world of primal rage Super exciting, super exciting. So definitely stay tuned for all the updates and everything in between, okay? And remember, uh, you know, what are your, your key tenements, Justin? Make sure you are taking care of yourself. Drink water, stay hydrated. Remember, you are important. Your needs are important. Do not neglect yourself. Exactly. Be good to yourself. Make extraordinary works of art. Fail, experiment, have fun. And if you made work with us along the way, post it. We'll repost it. We'd love seeing what you, uh, what you folks do. It's really awesome. Anyway, take yeah. it easy and good night. We'll see you next time. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, good day, wherever you are.